brothers and sisters have been doing here from Nigeria. Now, a lot of people, once they see you, their mindset is, this is who she is, this is what she is. But the moment you approach her and you're trying to ask, you flag your ID card. They're like, whoo. The university I attended, actually, Politecnico di Torino, is highly respected for engineering and architecture. So everybody was like, whoo. And then when they see the course again, people begin to respect you. So forget it. Don't be scared don't get bothered and there are so many things about it you need to know but the first thing i want you to know is that you are highly respected as an african student in italy but if you're just roaming about forget it now secondly there's high quality of education here forget it yes some people will tell you italy i know someone that told me he has not passed the shores of nigeria and he told me that italy is a third world country and i smiled i'm like okay no nah, it's no problem keep scouting it's been close to six years now the person is still struggling to get to the u.s i wish him what i wish him luck but i felt if he tried italy probably he would have been in the u.s by now we have so many people that came here did their masters and then they moved to, to, to u.s some of them moved to uk some of them used moved to other countries so italy has high quality education now and if you look very well among most of the um the universities in the world one of the oldest is university of bologna and it's here in italy so we have highly proficient and afford faculty members when we talk about afford and quality proficient um uh, researchers i i work i currently i pres um, currently work uh with um a professor that is seasoned in research she taught me how to do research <laughs> in a day and trust me yesterday i was sharing with tosin she sent me an email on tuesday for three conferences that i need to submit papers to based on some of my my results that i have three conferences it was tuesday and i need to submit them yesterday and to the glory of god i've submitted them so because she taught me like you know they are very seasoned and afford so forget it that you have to go to the US, you have to go to the UK, Italy doesn't have Italy life. We have them here. We have them here. Like some of them have been studying and trying to see how I can make some um, published papers and everything. It's not possible. But this woman in a day, she taught me. So I'm talking about this. Put it at the back of your mind. We have quality education here in Italy. A lot, especially engineering, architecture, and even the science, the arts too sciences and arts so please Italy is this is one other reason why you should choose Italy now the second one the next one is tuition fee as low as 150 euros or free now when I talk about 150 euros I mean somebody that doesn't even have scholarship but this issue of scholarship is very important in Italy and okay there's this thing that Italy has I will talk about it in depth later there's the right to education the right to education. So most of their universities, once you can provide information, your, your, your family income doesn't exceed a certain amount, you get practically free education, you get accommodation or you get money for to reimburse you for your accommodation, you get feeding and all that free. But the basic thing is, they are school, especially for international students, as low as 156 euros. The funny thing is, when I, when I registered for my master's in 2019, 2017, I registered with one round, no, 200. They refunded the money back. They refunded the money back to me because I got the scholarship. So you just register and then you get your scholarship. But for the rest of your studies, you are enjoying scholarships, you are enjoying uh, your studies. And if you can afford the money to pay for it, it's fine. Now, this is very important because Italian students, sorry, please, can you mute? Tosin, can you please help me mute the question? Thank you. Now, Italian students, the funny thing about this tuition fee is that Italian students that have up to 35,000 euro income per year, now I'm talking about family income now, up to 35,000 euro per year, they pay a tuition of 5,000 euros yearly. Yes, I confirmed this last week and it was really shocking. Now, this is it. Now, this is the catch that some of our international students use. Now, the hostel where I live, I live with some Iranians. Right now, my university is planning to create a, a brochure in Persian 
Why? Because we have like 70% of international students in my city, 70 or 60% are from Iran. And what is the secret? This is what they do. They inform those that come, they find a way to educate the people back home, like because the situation at their, in their country is getting worse by the day. So they inform the people back home, this is it, come over. Tuition is very low, 150 euros, and you can get accommodation, you can get scholarship. And before you know it, they keep coming. Like they keep applying in mass. And right now, a lot of them, come, and what is the catch for them? Come over, even if it's US, you want, excuse me, you want to go to the US, come over first. Maybe spend the one year or two years here, and then you start applying for another master's or PhD in the US, or you start applying for a job in, in UK. But first of all, come, leave the place. And that's what personally I'm here to tell you this, this morning. First of all, come, apply here, apply for the scholarship. When you get here, then you can jump out to other places. Because here, the truth is there's so much security, unlike the UK. I've, I've heard stories, I've read stories of so many people that sold everything they had just to go to the US, uh, UK for studies because they want to work. And what, what happened? A lot of them are in tears. Some of them are really suffering. So why do you want to put yourself through that? And I always have this slogan. If you want to japa, japa with sense. Japa with sense. That's just it. Now, the next point I'm going on to is the amazing opportunity to study abroad. Yes, I've had friends. I still have friends that are still in the UK. They are still studying. But most of them don't have these opportunities. But when you come here, trust me, there are scholarships. In fact, one of the days I was talking to my colleague, I said, wait, is it that Italy has plenty money? I don't understand. You will see this one, they call Bandu for this, mobility, eh, eh, Erasmus, Erasmus Plus. Eh, what's the other one? Erasmus something. Like different, different names and all targeted at everybody. Once you qualify, once you qualify, you have that opportunity amazing opportunity during my master's i was okay during my master we had erasmus erasmus plus we had um they call it tesi tesi proposta it was for you to do your, your thesis anywhere in the world like uh -huh. anywhere but the funding sorry, was you limited. sorry to interrupt you you have like a five minutes so. okay okay so thank you sir so you have this opportunity to study anywhere during your master's and it's funded, fully sponsored. The only thing is they have a cap. They have a cap of the amount they can sponsor you. So, but be rest assured is if you do your maths well, you can find a country you go to and you will fully live there for that six months and do your research work, basically. Now, there's another one, educational support. Yes, you can do work study. Some people ask if there are, you can, you, you can get a job and all that. Personally, work study, you can't take it. I don't advise a student to take a job with work study. I prefer that you take, um, a, sorry, a job with your study. So I prefer you go for a work study or tutoring opportunities at your universities. And trust me, they pay very well. My, my university pays about 50 euros thereabouts per course or so. I'm not exactly too sure because I'm not doing tutoring for a uh, master's program. I'm only focusing on my PhD and the courses I'm teaching. Okay, so fine. Now there are so many things. There are lots of opportunities available, and they're usually fully funded. So once we have that at back of our mind, we can be able to um, look up to coming to Italy. And the last one I said, Italy gives you a platform to launch you and propel you into your dream job. What am I saying? There are so many opportunities. Once you are able to know what you want, you go for it. Italy gives you opportunity. There are so many people that from here, after their master's, they have moved to Denmark. Some have moved to UK. Some have moved to the US. In fact, I know someone here because there's a group for um, Nigerian scholars here in Italy. And someone was here for his master's. Right now, he's currently in the US for his PhD. So, so many opportunities. And you can even travel. Yes, a friend went for Erasmus to, to, to the US for six months. Visa was granted effortlessly. So please, there are so many opportunities you can come here. And yes, just to wrap it up, some people are asking questions just for us to avoid coming to this part again in the question area. There are so many courses that have been offered in English, whether for bachelor's 185 English taught bachelor courses, 700, over 700 English taught master's courses, and over 150 
for distance learning courses. Now we have some scholarship available which I will rush. The first one is scholarship from the university for just one international student and it's around 10,000 euros for a year. So 10,000 euros for a year for you, but you need to be outstanding. You need to prove an outstanding performance for you to get that. Then there's this DSU. DSU is usually for almost for everyone. Now some 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 regions they call it EDZU. EDZU. They call it that. But this is just it's just the right to university education. They believe every child has a right to education, but it's based on your family income. And you can practically study for free. And they will pay you for being a student. They pay you money. I think for the female in engineering in my in my own uh, city, they pay about eight thousand euros. Yes, for females, uh, for late female, and you are an engineering student, about eight thousand euros. Uh, that's masters, bachelors, and masters student. Then they pay you meals every day. You get one meal per day, of which the other ones you can buy at subsidized rate. Then sports accommodation can also come freely. Now there's this very important one out of. Alta Scholar Polytechnic, ASP, is a scholarship for engineering student, uh, for engineering student and those students in architecture. But this is just from two universities, Polito and Polimi, Politecnico di Torino and Politecnico di Milano, here in Italy. So basically, when you finish this course, when you are get it, when you get this program, you are paid every month, and then you must maintain a certain average, or I think about twenty-seven over thirty, which is roughly like ninety or eighty something percent um um uh, like average you must have for you to maintain the scholarship it's just for two years at the end you get a double degree award basically now this very important one invest your talent in italy is an it's from the italian government they give this and it's usually eight thousand one hundred euros per year it's available on the the italian uh immig is not, not immigration website um Esther, i don't know how to explain it in english i'm sorry but it's on the website for those that will be joining the the, the 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 telegram link once the application is up we will drop it there for you now then there's this one from the ministry of foreign affairs it's called mercy m-a-e-c-i grant this one is for both for masters and um, phd students but the phd can only be for six months or nine months and there's age limit if you are above 28 you don't qualify for this one and there are so many other scholarships now there's something we call pre-phd Pre PhD usually it's just the school that does this. ICP, ICTP, International Center for Theoretical Physics, and these are the courses they offer. Basically, this they offer and it's funded fully funded by United Nations. Um, there's this uh, Italian government and one other uh, organization basically, and these are courses they, they they are very good. It's known worldwide. And you tell me Italy, it's a third world country. Italy doesn't have good education. Please tell the person again, it's not true. And anyone that gets into this program, you are you must be very good. So you need to prepare yourself, prepare a very good application, and you'll get there. From here, you can get a PhD very effortlessly. I'm almost rounding up, sir. <laughs> then the last one, the, then the Scholar Normale, Scholar Normale Superiore PhD program. These are for art and humanities. I know a lot of people have been asking questions from the arts and humanities sessions. Now, this basically a lot of courses there, philosophy, so many courses, and the scholarship is available. This very important one. I've known five people from African countries that have benefited. I've known one Nigerian, and currently all of three of them are PhD uh, holders already. They are, they are done with the program. This ENI award. You have to have your master's degree in Nigeria. And the PhD would have to be in sciences or engineering, practically related to this climate change, sustainability, energy, and all that. And it's a very good award. Like, I mean, it's really juicy for you. And most times upon graduation, you have to work, you would work with uh, ENI in Nigeria, we call them AJIP. You will work with them here in uh, Italy. You work with the company for like a year. And if they're satisfied with your work, they retain you, or you have to wait, um, you have to look for another place, but you would work with them for one year upon graduation. It's actually a very good offer, but many Nigerians actually don't take advantage of it because after 2017 that the lady got it, no Nigerian has gotten the scholarship again. So this is a good one for us to look out for and prepare ourselves for. Now, the very important thing is every year there are fundings. Now, personally, with a, with a funding called uh, PON, 
which was um, an extra, they had extra, after granting all the, the, the money for PhD for that year, they found out they had extra money to sponsor uh, scholars. So they opened the PhD and they called it PON. The, it's in Italian, the full meaning in, in, in Italian. So, but right now they opened another one this year for, they call PN, PNRR. It's another special one that came from, I think United Nations or so, to Italian, to Italy. So a lot of people got the funding. So every year you just need to prepare yourself. And every year there are so many opportunities for you basically. Now, there are so many uh, universities that has a wide range of English courses. Milano, Bologna, Messina, Pavia, Parma, Padova. So many of them you can see on the list. And these ones I have put here are practically those I have confirmed personally. And of course, I have gone to like two of these universities. And I think Tosin has been, Tosin is at the University of Messina right now. So I can beat my chest and tell you they have a wide range of uh, English courses you can actually take. So please take advantage of it and let's see how it is. The main thing here, the important thing here is you must japa japa with sense. And while you're applying, make sure you have at the back of your mind, I'm applying and I need to get a scholarship before coming. That's the most important thing. You don't need to sell all your belongings for you to japa and then come back and be suffering. There are so many opportunities. There are so many funding that can help you to japa. And we're here to see how we can successfully assist you in order for you to get the scholarship. Thank you very much. I'll be here for questions at the end of the sessions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So what a wonderful presentation from Kama. Kama, thank you so much for your time. And thank you, thank you. Please, you can use your reaction as a thumb up to appreciate the speaker. You know, you know if you enjoy that session, you can just use your reaction some more. Yeah, thank you so much, Kama. We really appreciate your wonderful speech. And uh, I think I want to continue in this trend. I don't know if uh, Kiara is ready. So I think I want to go with that trend the other way is flowing. So, so right now I want to bring on the second speaker uh, to the to the uh, to have the opportunity to make a presentation. Uh, before that, uh, a little bit about uh, Kiara. Uh, Kiara also happens to be a colleague of mine in the in the PhD program. Uh, you know, the first time I met her, I mean, the a sense of humor and I mean, and the, the interactions with people and the way she she deals with things, so calm and so cool. You know, I didn't hesitate to actually invite her to come and uh, help us in in this wonderful session. So, uh, Kerolansa has a BA and an MA in uh, modern language and uh, literatures in the University of Turin and uh, yeah I can tell you that uh, she has actually studied many of her uh, uh, scholars in, uh, in, in poets and uh, novelists from, from Nigeria right like um, Wale Sonika and uh, Shina Shebe you know if I'm right so she's very she knows you understand the culture about some part of Africa and uh, uh, Nigeria so uh, presently, she's doing a PhD in the National PhD in the Sustainable Development and Climate Change. And the uh, university is the University of uh, Ferreira. And uh, at present, she's in Norway, where she's doing a study program for the next six months. So right away, she's connecting with us from, from uh, all the way from Norway. Thank you very much, Kara. We're delighted to have you in, in this section. Thank Should you, I you, will you, will you yeah, like share yourself? I'll, yeah, I will share the screen. Thank you. That was a very kind introduction. Uh, so, hello, everybody. I will just start a presentation. Okay. So, Tozin has almost said it all. My name is Chiara, and I will be talking about the university system and opportunities for international students. So I've uh, lived the university system uh, from within uh, through my BA and MA, where, as Tosin mentioned, I studied in the University of Turin, which is here. 
and I studied modern languages and literatures. And I put also these other two flags under here because I had the opportunity, thanks to the Erasmus uh, program, which Kaman uh, mentioned before, I had the opportunity to study one year in Sweden uh, during my bachelor's degree, and then one year in the UK, even if I had to go back home before because it, it was in the, during the pandemic. Um, but so these two experiences also were part of my path um, in, as a university student. And at the moment, I'm a PhD student and I work at the University of Ferrara, which is here. Um, so here there's an overview of what I'll be talking about, but I won't spend too, time, too much time on this because I will go through each of these points. Uh, maybe I just need to make some premises before starting. Uh, that is, well, while I was uh, studying uh, my MA at the University of Turin, I also worked as a part-time collaborator with the University of Turin, which is one of the opportunities I will mention later. And uh, during this um, collaboration, I was a, called a buddy for degree-seeking students. So that meant that I helped some international students. Most of them were Iranian students, as Kaman mentioned. Uh, I helped them with some bureaucratic issues and to get to know the system and the city. Um, so some of the things I'll be talking about uh, are also problems that came up during this uh, experience I had with international students. And yeah, that's what mainly what I was I wanted to say. Uh, and one of the things that I discussed the most with them was about the residence permit, because as you know, uh, to come to study to Italy, you need to have a visa for study. And as soon as you arrive here, you need to apply for a residence permit. But then you also need to have a health insurance and you can either go for the uh, public health service insurance or get a private one, but I'm sure you already know most of these things. It was just to um, give a bit of context. Um, the private insurance maybe is a little bit more flexible, but it really depends on what you need, on how long you're staying, and so there are many variables. Um, as for the qualifications to be admitted, uh, the Italian university system requires that you have studied at least for 12 years uh, before applying. Uh, and if not, if your qualification was awarded in less than 12 years, you need to uh, show proof of the examination taken or of a post-secondary title that can compensate for the missing years. Um, Again, I will not spend too much time on that because you already saw a list in the previous presentation of some Italian universities. Uh, maybe your what could be interesting for you is that there are 67 uh, state-run universities, which means that uh, they are coordinated by the uh, Ministry for Education. And so every major city in Italy has at least one university. So for example, in Turin, where I studied, there is the University of Turin uh, that I attended and the Politecnico that uh, Kaman mentioned before. So there are two uh, big universities in one city, but there are they are scattered all over Italy. And there are also some private universities and some private online universities. And here I put the logos of three of them because they are the oldest, uh, and so the University of Bologna, University of Modena and Padova, they were the first ones to be founded in Italy, but I guess also the very early on in, in Europe. Um, then there are some uh, departments that uh, have a free admission and normally you find that uh, within the humanities, for example, when I started my um, my path in modern languages and literatures i did not have to take an exam i know that now there is an entry test but it is just an assessment test so um there is not a restricted number of places for most uh disciplines within the humanities however for other uh, departments for example engineering or architecture 
uh, and above all medicine, there, there is a restricted number of places, so you need to um, uh, take a selective admission test. So uh, just make sure that you check that. Um, for example, for medicine, medicine is a special kind of school. Uh, there is an entry exam uh, for to study medicine in English, and it is held every year in September. So it is coordinated at a national level. Um, and of course, if you decide to study um, a degree program in Italian, but maybe that's not the case, you need to show proof of uh, Italian language uh, ability. Then tuition fees, uh, we, we talked about that before as well. So maybe the only thing that I could add to what was said is that you really need to be careful and pay attention to the deadlines, because if you fail to submit uh, a document that is called ISE Parificato that uh, certifies that you come from, for example, a low income family or that your income anyway falls within a certain range. It means that you will have to pay the total amount of fees, which can be quite high. As was mentioned, it can be 3,000 euros, even 5,000 euros. Uh, but however, if you do submit this document it is um, and it is not something hard to do, you uh, can get to pay very little or even close to zero. And in order to get this kind of document that uh, you see written here, you go to a fiscal assistance center. Um, normally, most universities have an um, international student's office. You can just go there or you email them and ask them uh, if they recommend any fiscal assistance center and if they know which documents you should bring normally it's a bank statement you go there and they will help you and guide you through the procedure of preparing this document uh, as for the system it is coordinated um, in all of europe so you will find a similar structure in all of european universities there is a first cycle degree which in italian is called laurea triennale which is a bachelor's degree, and it lasts three years. It gives you 180 credits. I will explain that later. Then there's the master's degree, laurea magistrale, and it that takes two years. Uh, do not uh, be confused if you hear in Italian pe people talking about master, because that is not master's degree. We're, when we re refer to master as a one-year course that you can take either after your bachelor's, or your master's degree uh, to uh, get some specific qualification, for example. But there are also some um, faculties and disciplines that have a different structure. They, they are called single cycle degrees, um, and they can last five or even six years. And that's the case of um, medical schools. It lasts six years. And then after you have a second cycle qualification, you can go on to the third cycle, uh, so to a PhD, for example. So the credits I mentioned before, again, this is uh, something coordinated at a European level. Um, and the uh, credits uh, measure, as I wrote here, the student's workload, uh, and they include the attendance, classwork, laboratory work and individual studies. So roughly one credit corresponds to a workload of 25 hours, but of course they really depends on how you handle your own, your own study and your own work. And each subject has a number of credits. So this means that, for example, if you take a course that equals uh, to 12 credits, you will need to study more and attend, the, and attend more classes than, for example, a three credits course. And then at the end of each course, you need to sit an exam, which can be either a written test or an oral interviews. And again, it really depends on the discipline or even on single professors on what they prefer to do. So in my own experience in the humanities, it is quite usual to have oral interviews but for example in hard sciences or stem disciplines it is more common to have written tests and the grading scale goes up to 30 and the maximum grade is uh, 30 cum laude which is well, kind of a 31 let's say uh, whereas the passing grade is 18. 
And at the end of each cycle, you will need to write and probably defend a, a thesis. I say probably because, uh, again, it really depends on the discipline. As for myself, I had to write and defend a thesis both for my bachelor's at the end of my bachelor's and master's degree, but I know of other people, friends of mine, who studied in different fields. Uh, they some of them, for example, just wrote the thesis and submitted it and then got, got the grade. So they didn't have to discuss it. And the maximum grade you can take here is 110, cum laude again, and you get this grade uh, um, by adding up the average of your grades that you have taken during the years and also the points you get from your thesis and from the defense. <laughs> And finally, this is the last slide. Uh, there are many opportunities. Some of them were already mentioned before. So for example, the Erasmus, uh, the Erasmus Plus program is a very good opportunity, according to me, because it gives you the chance uh, to study in different countries for a couple of months and up to one year. And so you get to experience the education system in a uh, in, uh, in different university and different country. And the Erasmus uh, program is coordinated on PN level, but you can also go uh, to other continents and uh, it just has a different name. It is called, I think, Erasmus Mundus. Um, and it helps you also financially. So you get a scholarship, which is not a huge amount of money, but it's still a um, good, good opportunity to experience something different. And then there are often some part-time collaborations that the university offers and you can apply for them if you have good grades and or sometimes there's an oral interview you need to sit uh, and then you, you can apply for this kind of job. It doesn't take much time normally, so they are uh, measured uh, hourly. So for example, you work for 100 hours uh spread across the years and at the end of that you get paid so that is also financial help and it's a good opportunity uh, for example tutoring and student support is also an example of part-time collaborations you could do with the university and finally some degree programs also ask you to uh, have an internship in a, an industry for example in an office in schools and uh you can do that you can ask uh, assistance to the university for that they will help you and guide you and tell you how to choose where to uh, spend your internship um, months let's say or you can also apply for erasmus trainership so you will do the internship but abroad the very last tip I could give you is that you always need to check the website of the university you've chosen because even if you, once you enroll, you get the credentials of the university, that doesn't mean that you will get all the news via your email. You will still need to check the website, the news section, and above all the deadlines. They are fundamental, so do not miss deadlines, otherwise you end up maybe paying too, uh, too many fees or uh meeting opportunities and also make uh, sure to check if the university you would like to go to has an international student's office because normally they are very kind and happy to help and um, that's all so thank you thank you thank you once again carolasa what a wonderful presentation. I mean, nobody does it better than the daughter of the soil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank so, you. thank you so much. Please, can we give a reaction, thumb up to Kiara? What wonderful presentation. You can use the chat, you can use the thumb up. Yeah, lovely, lovely. And I, I will admit to you on the YouTube session, on the YouTube, Kiara, somebody told you, somebody said that, uh, oh, Kiara, I love your voice. So, somebody is oh. loving your voice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> On the live stream. Nice. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. Uh, Kiara is still here. Carmen is also still here. And then uh, I'm going to invite the third speaker now. After the third speaker, we are going to have a, a short session for question and answer where we have the privilege to ask our questions. So, but before I bring him, again, I want to remind you that uh, 
for those of us that will be shy to ask your questions by unmuting yourself during the question and answer, please go to slido.com. I already pasted the link on the chat. Click on the link to register your questions. If you want to type your question, we will not answer the questions on the chat, but use the link on the chat to register your questions. And for those people on the YouTube as well, please register your questions through the slido.com. Just click on the link and register your question there. So if somebody asks a question that is of interest to you, you can vote the question so that uh, in the arrangement, we will be able to answer to the most important questions, but we will try as much as possible to answer every question. So that is the format we want to uh, go through for this for the session. So right away, I'm going to bring on the third speaker uh, to the platform. But before I do that, um, uh, our third speaker also has a, his name is uh, Joshua, Joshua Adeleke. Joshua Adeleke also is a Erasmus Modus scholar. And he has been in Italy, he has been in Poland, he has been in Czech. And yes, currently now he's doing uh, his PhD in applied mathematics in the uh, Illinois Institute of Technology in the US. So right now he's a scholar in the US doing his PhD program there. Yeah, so we are happy to have him this uh, morning. And uh, this time is not convenient for him. I think he's around uh, 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. now. So he's supposed to be sleeping. Please, before we start, can you give him a thumb up, please? He's supposed to be on bed right now. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. is not an easy one So for him to be here. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Joshua. So you thank have you. the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great honor and privilege to be here this morning. And, uh, to talk about uh, admissions in Italy, because this is a this is a home of a lot of beautiful minds that some of us read about, you know, at our. Sorry, please, can you give me some seconds? Sorry, I didn't. Uh, he will be talking about the master's information session. So for those of us that are interested in master's admission, this is the right one for you. Please. So please pay attention. So he'll be talking about the master's admission now. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So I don't. I mean. Italy happens to be almost happens to be home to several beautiful minds we read about or we heard about at our formative formative age, you know, ranging from Joseph Louis Lagrange to Gabriel Piola, even to the current guy, I mean to one of the Asian guys, Angelo, you know, Da Vinci, and many of them. And in recent time, it's it's gonna be a known, it's a known fact that one of the top guys in mathematics and engineering, Professor Alfio Quattaroni, is also, is also what he called, an Italian. And all this is just to concretize or to establish the grounds that Italy is indeed a home to notable minds and beautiful minds. And if you're envisioning of going to Italy for your education, I can tell you for free, that you're not making the wrong decision. Rather, it's, it's a very good one. And on the very first note, I would just take us through, there's nothing new actually, because most of the thing has been captured in the presentation, in the, I mean, presentation given earlier. So, but uh, some, some little things I'll go through. Well, so, um, like Kiara said, she, she gave the requirements, you know, to get into a master's program. But I, I, I'm, I'm going to give a caveat right now. Most of the things in here uh, are just, uh, in my, my own opinion, and my own observation, you know, things that worked for me at the time and for all, all some colleagues, some close ally, and maybe it could, be, it could be beneficial to many. So just to make, to make it more, what's it called, more logical and rather than me just reading slides to you, you know, requirement to get, in, to, to, to get into a master's program, you need a bachelor's degree program, you know, and like Clara, Clara said, I think she made said first circle. Uh, I mean, to the best of our knowledge, we know this as bachelor's degree or BSc, whichever form, bachelor of science, bachelor of arts, bachelor of laws, bachelor's in general. Yeah, maybe first class and second class on those division. And reason is, well, maybe those with on second class lower division could try, third class could try, but well, it all depends on you, you know, scaling these, you know, as seen earlier, you know, the, 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 the benchmark to 
to, to progress to the next class or to pass a course is about 18 out of 30. And that's equivalent to 60%. So it shows that, well, you, you, need, you, need, you need a very good antecedent to try very well in a program in Italy. So, but it's not something fancy. It's what, what is obtainable. Well, it's either you have a bachelor's degree with a first class honors or second class honors upper division or lower division, whichever one. Or having, a, having a, a higher national diploma, you know, maybe coupled with bachelor's degree program, top up program, or rather OND and HND, because we have had about a count of some persons holding HND and getting into master's program in Italy. So you can verify this. So, or rather NC or A levels plus a bachelor's degree. I mean, A levels in this case, maybe Cambridge levels and the likes. So, and um, moving very fast now, the next thing is just document for admission. I mean, just like every other application for international application, you need your bachelor diploma. I mean, that's a certificate in here, coupled with your transcript. Yeah. And academic transcript of academic record. You need a statement of purpose. And this is nothing serious. I mean, the popular one we know of is using writing this motivation letter using the um, STAR approach, that's situation, tax, action, and results. You know, you want to write why you should be admitted for this program. You can always, um, you can always carve out the situation, then, you know, bring out the tax and actions. That implies things you've done and results. So I'm going to skim through that very fast. So you apply for a program that involves renewable energy. You know, you can, your situation could be the, 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 the old ECOPs we have in the country with our what's called electrical power supply. And tax should be, you know, meeting with the 2030 or the 2050 um, Parigo, you know, or the SDG goal of clean and affordable energy. And your actions could be things you've done, you know, you already degree in physics, electrical engineering and the likes. And uh, results should be, oh, if you get admitted to this program, what do you plan to do with the degree? And you can write something, you know, with that 500 words. An academic CV in here, yeah, you can easily check in to check check the website of those schools you're interested in. And most of the time, some like when we applied, and some of us got into Italy at the time, we were we were, we were required to to use the Europass uh, Europass uh, method or Europass uh, template. So just check out what what is required of you. Yeah, and the other thing is referees. You know, like uh, like what was it called? Like Newton captured in his letter to Robert Book. That if I could see further, I stood on the shoulders of giants. You know, we all know about the old back and forth Newton had with what was it called? The true hook. What I'm trying to say, in essence, is that sometimes we, or most of the times, we need shoulders of giants, you know, to, to leverage on. And in this case, um, the universities in here want to see what the antecedent looks like. Who can vouch for you? Who can vouch about your academic pedigree, academic antecedents, and, you know, your skills and those things you, you stated in your CV, you know, and maybe captured in your SOP as well. So, and sometimes maybe if the, the referee contact details are not required, maybe you might be expected to upload your ref reference yourself. And whichever way, you can always get that done. And the other thing is English language proficiency document. It could be a letter of, um, a letter of proficiency certificate from your university or from the registrar's office stating that you were taught and assessed in English language in Nigeria or whatever part of the country or part of the world you're coming from. And international passport page, that's required. And passport photograph, I mean, so. Maybe other things could be attached, but I feel these are, these are basic. So, um, like, um, like was said earlier, you know, uh, some universities were listed, but to the best of my knowledge and consultation with some friends and, and allies, uh, these universities, to the best of my knowledge, I've, I mean, I've, I've observed them for the last two years. They often publish scholarship calls every year, best of Calib Cal Calabria or something like that, and you know, Tuskia and Veroni and the like. So, and University of Blackwell, that's for math mode, intermats, and they also have what they call the Erasmus programs as well. So you can check them out. And yeah, but for that of Bologna, uh, added that of the graduate program, you need a GRE, that's graduate record exam. Yeah, so, and for undergrad, you need TOLC. So you can verify that as well, but uh, it's, I mean, there's this uncertainty that all, I mean, these schools or these institutions of higher learning publish scholarship calls on a yearly basis. I mean, leveraging my, leveraging the last three years, I mean, observation, observing, observe, observing this, 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 program, this university. Yeah, and uh, available courses, yes. I mean, it was stated earlier, numerous courses were listed, but, you know, I just, uh, I just pinpointed um, a few, so and which you can go through, you know, and whichever way, so it's not something serious. And there, uh, it's like just programs, yeah. So, uh, scholarships, well, to the best of my knowledge, I know that of the University of Bologna Action Scholarship, which is quite distinguished, and it comes every now and then. Yeah, I spoke with a friend who graduated from University of Bologna, and uh, about departmental scholarship, who happens to be uh, a recipient of this departmental scholarship. And he advised that uh, 
well, it's not always a very big deal to send that email to the department requesting if they have some kind of offer, you know, for you or for, for prospective um, grad students in the department. And like uh, like the first speaker said, she, she made mention of the regional scholarship, and that's not omitted as well. And Clara also emphasized that by talking about the EC, you know, to, to establish that you're from, uh, you're from a low-income country or a low-income family, you know, revenue or something like that. So, yeah, these, these are very big. And, uh, yeah, so, and uh, also universities with free application, I mean, we can verify this, but speaking with some friends who are, who benefited from these in time past, you know, recommended that they got some kind of free uh, free application um, application waiver or some kind of application waiver during application process or procedure or time, you know, window at the time. And uh, some of these schools were actually captured in there. But you can check out for other schools, you know, maybe if you want to try to throw your weight around, trying several schools, you know, trying to cast your net in several waters. So, you know, you can always give all this a try. And um, yeah, lastly, well, I was told I got a chat application window for some courses, maybe those in STEM or not, or maybe engineering and sciences, some uh, ranges from October of the previous year to to June of the entry year. I mean, for example, if you're coming in, uh, in June, if you're coming in for the 2023, 2024 academic session, so it shows that application window would have opened since October 2022. And um, yeah, and 2023, so 2023, 2024, yeah, so it should have opened since October 2022, and it's going to close by June 2023. And the resumption maybe starts in maybe. Uh, so the resumption commences maybe in September, October, whichever way, depending on the school. And uh, on that note, I give a special thanks to also called Engineer Bill, who I consulted with. He's an alumnus of the University of Bologna. Yeah, so we we'll talk about this, and, and, and above all, a big thanks to the organizer of this uh, of this uh, of this colloquium, and um, to to all the audience as well. So I'm just going to say thank you, thank you for your time and for your consideration. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at the top. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Joshua. Thank you. thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. We really so much appreciate this time. And thank you so much. And thank you for the wonderful presentation as well on master's application and admission. So now we are in the question and answer session. Uh, we, we have three speakers already, so we are ready to answer your questions. Uh, Joshua Adeleke is available, Kialasa is available, Kaiman is available, and uh, Shedrak is also available. Shedrak, I can't see you now. Okay, Shedrak, so I think he's also available to answer your questions, on general questions, and specifically for masters. For now, please don't ask any questions on PhD program. Don't ask any questions on PhD program. We're focusing on masters and general questions. Okay, Dave is back here. So you can ask general questions and also on master's program. So we ask, we, you will ask your questions for about 15 minutes, about 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, we will we answer your questions. We will have a short break within three minutes and then we will come back for the last session, which is on PhD program. So you don't want to miss the session on PhD program. Whether you are doing masters or bachelors or whatever, we are going to give you direct applications and practical steps. I mean, so it's very loaded. So you don't want to miss that session. Okay. So now I'm going to start with what we have in Slido, and then those of you that are ready to speak, please you can raise your hand to the reaction. Raise your hand to the reaction so we will have the queue and then I will call you once I call your name. You will unmute yourself, you tell us your name, and then you'll ask your question. So, but I'm going to start with what we have on the slide. So, the first question I, I'm having here is uh, this person is anonymous. Please try to put your name when you're asking your questions. Okay, so it's schools with scholarship for undergraduates. Uh, well, sorry, we, we are not having. Uh, undergraduate session for now, uh, but then everything that is being said there is also applicable for undergraduates. Uh, uh, yes, so I'll quickly go to the next question. Are there scholarships for students who want to study master's courses relating to fashion and lifestyle? Are there scholarships for students who want to study master's courses related to fashion and lifestyle? I want Kerala to ask, answer that question. Yeah. 
And then scholarships for students who want to study master courses in relating to fashion and lifestyle. I guess so. Um, but I, maybe it doesn't really depend on the subject. Uh, you can get a, a scholarship and then you you apply to the course you, you prefer. Uh, but I'm sorry, that is not really my field, so I don't... I don't have a right answer for that too. But anyway, there are many universities that offer such courses, so you can also check with them and email their international offices. I'm sure they will be able to help. Okay. Uh, so actually, I don't, I don't know if there's any, I don't know if there's specific courses I've not seen that is fashion or lifestyle or something. So maybe you are trying to look at it, the area of arts or something like that. So, but then you have to have a particular discipline or field. So, but then you can also make your search. We can also find. So more, one more last question. Sorry, on, listen to uh, the here. For, uh, for the masters, if it's an MBA, yes, at the University of Bologna, but it's very competitive. There is, there's an MBA for this uh, fashion and lifestyle in the University of Bologna, but it's very competitive. Okay. I saw it Please when I, I was applying I the I want to put the link or the chat or the name so that the person can relate with it more better. Okay. Thank you so much. So that answered the question. So. The next question that I have here before I come back to those that I want to speak. How do I get the full information on University of Bologna scholarship? I'm applying for masters in international horticultural science. Kaman, do you want to answer the question? Sorry, what's the question? I went to look for the link for the... Okay, so, yes. How do I get the full information on University of Bologna scholarship? I'm applying well, for master's in... I'm applying for master's in international horticultural science. Uh, well, uh, like Kiara mentioned in her presentation, you need to check the specific university website. So for this scholarship, when you go to the university website, you search for the scholarships. I think almost every university has the... Um, the scholarship um link or the scholarship um should you use call it um yeah it's a link that will take you there and you see all the list of scholarship whether for international students or, or general so he can check that and if he doesn't see any scholarship for that program he can write to the department or the international office to ask if there are scholarships available in that particular major or that particular course basically Okay, so yeah. yeah, thank you. So, I uh, so you make your applications first. Once you make your applications on the website of that particular uh, institution, they will make an announcement for the scholarship as well, and every other scholarship that you can also benefit from. So, please, you also have to pay attention to details on the website of the university you are applying to for a particular program because they may announce a different scholarship which you can benefit from in the program so thank you so we come back to google meet we have uh, oyebanji mohammed yeah you raise your hand oyebanji can you meet, unmute yourself to ask your question uh, good day, everyone yes yeah, please go ahead yeah i'm home mohammed so i'm on this it's looking well and i've not laid the see on um the procedure on the uh, the route to get a scholarship in terms of preparation of the documents. Okay, uh, Kama, yes, you should be able to deal with that. Oh uh, no, uh, okay, Kama, and then Div can do that appropriately. So uh, let me Dave. let me. Papa, I'm an applicant from Nigeria, and I just gained an admission into University of Pavia. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah. I just want to have a kind of information. Okay. 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 The, okay. So. Thank you. I, I think Dave. We, we should hear Dave's voice. So I think Dave can go, and <laughs> if he missed anything, I would add. 
thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I think um, for me, because um, it depends on the particular um, program you're coming for. Like mine was in some arts and math mode program. So um, for my program, we already had the, what's it called, the scholarship in that particular, um, it was an Erasmus program. So, but I think there are some, like some other programs that maybe the scholarship doesn't come maybe um, with the admission, let me say that way. So those um, particular scholarship, like when you come down, like, okay, like personally, okay, during our time, then we also applied for the regional scholarship. So that's when you, um, like, like when you are there already. So um, going through, getting your visa, making the application, there's a window where the application gets, like where they open it. So that period, we apply for the regional scholarship. So, but my apart from the regional scholarship, we have the scholarship particular for the program, the Erasmus um, Plus um, program. So um, there are some that comes with the admission, but some other scholarship you get to um, apply for them when you arrive in the school, like that of the regional scholarship. Yeah, I think um, that's it. Ama? Thank you. Yeah. Um, also, while you prepare to apply for the scholarship, the regional scholarship most you have to be here to apply for it. But you just need to prepare the family income document from Nigeria. Now, there's another catch here. I would always suggest keep searching for um, checking for opportunities, especially that national, uh, international, no, the national Italian national government scholarship. I, I can't remember the exact name. They usually put um, um, uh, the website for the Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, their own Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They usually post it. And this is it. For Nigeria, I think last year, it was only two people that got. Two years ago, two people got it from Nigeria. And this is it for master's program, meaning you must be able to prepare a good application um, for the scholarship now. Because when it comes out, the, the 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 window is very small. The window of application for that scholarship is very small because they only need two people. So your your, your application must must stand out for that particular application. Just, just start preparing your materials. Start preparing it. And another thing also, you can reach out to the department if there are scholarships available for the master's program you are coming for. And if there are, they will respond either the department or the international office. We have a lot of people that uh, speak English in our international office in Pavia. By the way, congratulations for your admission. And uh, they will definitely respond. So please let us know. And uh, I believe also at the, maybe the Telegram um, link, if you need further information, I think you will get that. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much, um, Dave and uh, Kama. So, Okafo Nena, Okafo, can you unmute yourself? Okafo, Okafo Nena. Okay, I think she's not available now. Suleiman Isiak. Good morning to everyone. Yes. Good morning. Sorry, we can you we can't hear you. Can you move close to your mic? Okay. Okay. Um. Sir, am I audible now? Yes, yes, good. <clears throat> okay, so any appreciate to all, starting from Mr. Afeli Ferro, Ma'am Kama, Ma'am Tarama, and the rest of you. I appreciate this program. It's really whatever we want for us. Uh, my name is Robert Sunday, coming from Nigeria. Uh, I believe, to, based on my research, I believe we have two major scholarships. We have a meritorious scholarship and we have a regional scholarship. So uh, if we was come to us, and the last option is a regional scholarship, and, based on, and on, on this scholarship, so we have to get to Italy before you can apply for this scholarship. Now, my question goes to us. I have two questions on this aspect. First one is, what, what, how much can you read this scholarship? I mean, what percentage can you give to this scholarship? 60%, 70%, or is it, is it sure that 100% can get this scholarship? That's number one. 
Number two, like someone coming from Nigeria with the hope of we will secure a digital scholarship when they get to Italy. Like how much in Nera such person need to have with himself or herself to keep himself alive, running the activities before he secure the digital scholarship. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much for the questions. Let's wait for the answer. Again, I will start with Kama. Yeah, because she did, I'm pointing to Kama because she did a master's program here. Uh, yeah, and also they, but through Erasmus program, so they are different uh, entity with different uh, uh, knowledge about this program. So, Kama. Okay, so, so starting from your first question about the percentage you can get for the scholarship. Usually, it depends on your family income. From my presentation, if you look, if you were looking, you would see I mentioned it depends on your family income. Now, this is a document you make you make from Nigeria. Now, it's based on how much every member of your family it's it's earning every year. Now, if you are coming this year, you need to make it. I think for last year because it yes. changed. Initially, it used to be for the past um, two years. But now I think for the last year. So you need to make uh, all the lists and you need to also tell us um, that your house. What's, what's like, do you own a house or your family? Do, do you have a family house or you are renting? So all that. And if you have a family house, you need to give the dimension of the land that the house is built. Because in the Italian government, they have a way they do, especially that easy parificato. There's the way they do the calculation. Now, you also need to list every member of your family, your immediate family. So there's the way they do the calculation based on the number, the income coming in, the family, um, the number of uh, people in the family and all that. So you need to do that document from Nigeria. And I think most of it, it's like an affidavit where you have to come back to the embassy here and the embassy here will do the calculation and give you a document with the embassy, the Nigerian embassy um, letterhead that you would use for submission. Like Kiara mentioned, you need to be careful with the dates. Now, the date also affects you. Now, once you get that, it depends on the income. I think if you are within, the last I checked, I'm not sure of uh, now, but between zero to 15,000 euros, you, you get full scholarship. Now, if the scholarship for the women I know in engineering, they get 8,000 as of this year, 8,000 euros. Now, 8,000 euros, you get the full. Now, meaning if you're getting the full, it covers everything, your accommodation, your feeding and everything. So if you're going to stay in the accommodation, they are going to give you maybe half of the money. So a whole year, you have a room to yourself and then you're staying there and in my in Pavia here, the Idizu here grants you one meal free per day. Then if you want a second meal, you will buy it, I think around four euro fifty cents or thereabouts. So this is it. If you are within the second, this is the first um the first level, zero to fifteen thousand. Now, if I don't know, I don't think there's anyone in Nigeria that's coming to well, they could be coming to Nigeria, Italy that has over fifteen thousand. The second, the second phase, they call it fascia. The first fascia is zero to fifteen. The second fascia is starting from sixteen or fifteen thousand, anything fifteen thousand one hundred, down to about I think uh, twenty or thereabouts. Then the third fascia and the fourth fascia. The fourth fascia I think starts from thirty five thousand upward. So if you are at the third fascia, you're not getting shishi. So, but if you are at the second fascia and third there's a percentage and that's based on what Idizu um decides to give I, I personally don't know the calculation but as a but if you are within the first fascia you get the full money that's just it now the second question how much you would need to, to have with you personally i would advise um looking at what the ministry of education a ministry of um foreign affairs italian minister of foreign affairs have on their website because that also depends on how you get the visa if you don't have a scholarship. So I think for the last year, I, I'm not sure, but I worked with someone that said it's around 5 million or 6 million thereabouts in your account. So, but that's not it. That's for the, for the ministry, the embassy to know you can take care of yourself for those two years. But ideally, in a month, 
well inflation now so house rent and all that but in a month you should have nothing close to about 600 euros should be able to keep you accommodation feeding and all that in a month around 600 euros basically and this is it if you are coming in september as because semester usually starts september october so if you're coming in september just know that once you apply for the scholarship the first payment will be in december and usually it's around 20th 21st 22nd so these are the dates that payments that are made for the original scholarship so it means you need to take care of yourself september october november and now the december you're not getting the full money it's percentage so you might end up getting maybe i don't want to say 30 percent because the, the first payment could be like maybe 700 euros or 800 euros or maybe 1002 i don't know as of this year but as of 2017 it was around that um 800 700 euros basically so then in july then they will pay you again then in july they will now pay the remaining balance in a lump sum june july they will now pay the remaining balance in a lump sum and that's it but also there's a renewal process which you need to make if you don't if you don't pass um up to 30 credit you don't submit up to 30 credit you would be asked to return the money back yes very important i mentioned this because I, I know someone committed, um, I, I think an Italian student, medical student committed suicide last year because he was in third year and he couldn't get the, the required credit to renew his scholarship. And he was thinking of how to refund the money, so he committed suicide. So I need to mention this to people because I don't want to cheat anyone. I have to tell you the truth. So you need to work towards passing your courses in order to retain um, the scholarship if you must apply to, to the regional scholarship. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the wonderful answer. So it's clear with the answers. So yes. first you make your application, you, you get the admission, and then it's possible, for example, different university like the University of Messina, you can apply for your regional scholarship before you come because I have some students already that have come, you can apply right from Nigeria to your regional scholarship. But then before it can become effective, you have to arrive in Italy with your family income. Those family income, so you can, when we are, when we add you to the group, we can give you some, uh, we, some trusted agents that can help you in the processing of your family income, because it's not something that you can go about doing yourself. So you can have some trusted agent that we can hand over to you, give you the contacts so that they can help you to get your family income. So with the family income, you bring it when you are coming to Italy so that your scholarship will be effective. That is for the master's program. For the PhD is different, but we talk about that when we get to, to that level. Thank you. So uh, quickly, we I will quickly call on our time is fast pen. Uh, Yusuf. Okay, sorry. I think it's raised up. It's raised up. I don't know. Yusuf, I'll be here. Yeah. Yusuf? Okay, Yusuf is not there. Oh, you call Isaiah. Oh, your caller is there? Okay, it's not there. Hello, Aruna. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, please quickly ask question. Okay, so my name is Oyekola Isaiah. Actually, I want to appreciate uh, all of you guys. This is this is uh, the best uh, uh, presentation ever. So I just want to ask, like, you, you guys have done a great job. The question is, uh, the, oh, uh, Scholarship I'm looking for is a theological seminary uh, scholarship. So I just want to ask if I can get such uh, scholarship in Italy. So thank you so much. Sir. Uh, I don't know who is the pastor here, Pastor Dave. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. Who can help us to answer that question? Okay, so the um, Jolly Kutuku Seminary, actually, we might not be able to give you specifically uh, some links and some information about specific courses. But then, please and please, 
you can get all this information on Google. And then you can also find the list of all the universities in Italy in universitali.it. Kama, we put universitali.it on the chat now. All the list of universities and all the courses they are offering in English language is available on universitali.it. You can find the direct link there. You can find all the universities on this website. This, univers this website is uh, is uh, being controlled by the Ministry of uh, University and Research, I think, in, in us with, uh, yeah, maybe foreign affairs. As well. So we can find the list of all the universities in Italy in this place and also scholarships information on this website we are giving you now. You can just after now, you can go through it. Universitatali.it, you'll find every information about universities. There's some annual scholarships, some information on English courses for masters, for bachelor's degree. Those of you that are asking about bachelor's degree, you'll find all this information on universitatali.it. So please make use of that. And then for geological survey or something, please, you can also do the search. And maybe you can find something very similar. So thank you very much. Uh, if you're Lua, yes. you know OK, sorry, Chiara. Yeah. No, I, I thought I might just add something here because there are all these questions about very specific courses or specific universities and maybe, for example, me, I, I sometimes I don't know the answer and that is why the reason for that is um, so public universities, state-run universities in Italy, they are coordinated, they are public, so they are coordinated by the Ministry of Education, but universities, Italian universities are autonomous bodies, so that means that they can choose their own regulations, um, so sometimes things differ also quite greatly from university to, to university and that is why maybe we cannot answer all these questions or uh, why you need to check with the university you are interested in so i just wanted to add this sorry okay yeah thank you so much thanks yeah yeah Kara is right so because universities are autonomous and then yeah so different programs and all that so but then it's, it's, it's really good if you can search on different university websites you will get a lot of information if you follow Oshinawa, are you there if you follow Oshinawa, okay yeah. In, in, yeah. yeah please hello. can you ask your questions hello hello good morning am i audible hello yes 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 hello good morning my name is if you know thank you size and mass for the opportunity um Please, my question is directed to um, Madam Kama. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't know if I got the pronunciation right. I I gained admission recently to Polimi, that's Polytechnico di Milano. But uh, while she was making a presentation the other time, I remember she mentioned a particular scholarship uh, that is peculiar to Polimi and Polito, that's Polytechnico di Milano and Polytechnico di Torino. So I was hoping if um, she could probably uh, share the link on the on the scholarship that particular scholarship since i gained admission there and i've been on the lookout for scholarship especially to the school and if there are any other ones peculiar to the school that she could share about so that's that's just what i want to say thank you sir oh, okay, okay so i could share the link but there's another thing i need to be uh, mentioned you need to have TOEFL test of english as a foreign language is one of the requirements so you need to have that i think that and gre or just gre i'm not too sure so i will check and send drop the link because that's like five years ago so so i need to check the the website again and send it i'll drop it in the in the chat thank you thank you, thank you. aruna 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 hola hola okay yeah i think i'm online so good afternoon okay. to my dear scholars in the building, starting with scholar Feni Ferro, Feni Foro, Jack Kamal, and Kama and Kara herself. Um glad to be here. I'm Aruna Olalao from Nigeria. I am currently an a master student in Pavia University. I actually want to contribute to what you've said or what you've been discussing so far and i will take it from the angle of regional scholarship i have a very different uh, opinion 
to how the system is being operated here. Actually, before my arrival, it was September 28th, I got my visa. I think it was a bit low. I think I came late to Pavia into Italy. So I my scholarship was denied on the basis of lateness in submission of my documents. So it was a very, very tough and a rough experience. And as a matter of fact, this is the first time I'm coming live to discuss my experience on what I've actually, what I've been passing through or going through since my arrival here in Italy. Because I wouldn't want that to be a kind of a source of discouragement to others that are coming behind because they might say, oh, is this what is going on in Italy? You might choose not to apply to university in, in, in Italy. But I am very happy that I have a, a, a professor in making, <laughs> via Chiara, and she's available here. I would want to know if there is actually a way to tackle this kind of situation, provided you find yourself, you find yourself in, in, in this kind of situation. Like you got to Pavia, you got to Italy, and your scholarship, regional scholarship, was denied on the basis of the lateness of the document. Is there any organization that you can actually walk up to and discuss the issue with them that can take up the case from where you, you from where you actually drop it? Is there an organization that can actually help you out on this kind of case? Because for someone like for someone like me, I actually I have actually centered my mind on that regional scholarship. So when I came, it was denied. As we speak, I'm currently in Sweden. I had to leave Pavia when I could not fund my uh, my monthly bill. So after I I I I I I think spending the the, the okay, so the thank you. Let's quickly let's quickly answer to the questions because uh, okay, okay. Karma also emphasized on that when she was speaking. And uh, okay. maybe I'll also allow Kiara to come. So you, please, you can meet yourself now. I will try to specifically uh, uh, answer that question. I also give the floor to Kama as well and also Kiara by nation. Because what we mentioned is that on the regional scholarship, it is very important that you arrive on time to submit your family income to obtain the document I see Pirificato to submit to effect your regional scholarship. And so, because uh, I have the same similar situation from a, uh, from a person in Kenya and in Ghana now, in fact, for a bachelor's degree, they, they already got the scholarships from their own countries, you know, and they're in University of Messina. But then the uh, visa delayed in their countries before they arrived there. So all the other students already got the scholarship. In fact, I have another person from Nigeria that already got the scholarships. Now he has free accommodation, he has free feeding, he's, got, he's getting his money. Why another person from the same Nigeria doesn't arrive on time and he missed the scholarship? So it's all on getting arrived on time when you, when you have the admission, apply to the scholarship, regional scholarship on time as well. And so that and then already prepare all your documents and make sure that you get your visa on time and so that you can come here and drop your family income and obtain the ic if you do, and then you are able to enjoy the scholarships so i will allow Kama to add to that as well so that we can also move on please if you are not talking or mute, mute yourself please i think i would allow Kara to say something then i would have to um, add more to what she would say but yeah, Kara. Yeah, okay. okay, so uh, I, I know I've been through similar situations with the international students I was working with, and it can be quite overwhelming because it's, uh, it's hard also to keep track of everything once you arrive in Italy. And uh, there's a lot of procedures and bureaucracy uh to keep track of so that's why uh it's important to uh get support from there are student organizations now i don't have any particular name on top of my head but uh you can check with your university but also i, I think most universities offer this kind of body support or student tutors uh you can go and talk to them and they can in turn help you um I'll help you with the regional scholarship uh, maybe they can contact the organization and can tell you exactly what 
uh, what you need to, what kind of documents you need to present. Uh, but then deadlines normally are very strict, so that can be an issue. So maybe you need to get prepared before you arrive, so that once you're here, everything is ready and you can be sure that uh, everything goes well. But of course, there's always a chance of uh, things not going well, and but that's with everything in life. But I don't know if Kaman has more to add to this. Okay, yes, I have uh, something to add. Now, uh, I'm so sorry for what happened, but it's very important and we will keep reiterating that you are mindful of the deadlines. You need to be mindful of the deadlines. It's very, very important because the truth is, I know someone that also got it, like Tosin was saying, but the person couldn't get here and have, this thing was withdrawn. So you need to just be mindful of the deadline as to what you can do. Um, I don't know if you were checking your emails, and of course I didn't know about this earlier. I didn't know about your situation earlier. I would have um, probably dropped the message in the because I, when I saw your name, I I recognized you from the Nigerian Scholars in Italy group. Yeah. So I would have dropped it there. It um, it is who opened an extra because they had extra funding. So by January they sent another link for people to apply again for those that did not get anything and they would have been awarded I think 1002 or 1005 I'm not too sure exactly now oh, I think, so I, I think I did that you did that okay fine yeah, yeah, so I probably I have not exactly, their response their response maybe it might take time but they will definitely respond because you didn't benefit from uh, the earlier um scholarship so it's just the basic thing I would say most times because of the bureaucracy in Italy, if there's anything you should know, it's very bureaucratic and it's basically for orderliness. So once they say something, they want to just stick with it. They are very disciplined in that aspect. So if they said this is the deadline, this is the deadline. So except if there are extra funds, then you can people can be notified about it and you can apply. So, but once they say it's deadline, it's deadline, most times. Now, another thing you can do also is probably maybe you could have, uh, you can, and you, you can um, send email to the department, your department head or the international office to ask if there are available scholarship for this year. Yes, you're a current student, but you can ask if there are available scholarship for the next year, because I believe you should be the second year now, or first year. Oh, so first year, okay, first year. Okay, fine. You can still apply and explain your situations and international office can be able to to um, talk with you on that, basically. But like Kara said, just be prepared. For those that are still in Nigeria and you want to bank on the regional scholarship, I personally tell, I tell people that communicate with me, don't put your eggs in one basket when you're coming to Italy. Apply for several, throw your, your net everywhere apply for scholarship everywhere and trust that you'll be able to get because regional scholarship sometimes if you don't have that initial money finances to keep you for the month like for the months before the scholarship arrives it's going to be difficult for you so please this is all i have to say on this be mindful of the deadlines it's very key thank you okay thank so you thank you very much and uh Unfortunately, we will not be thick, uh, we will not be able to take much question. But before we go, there is this question here: Is it possible to switch from science or engineering courses to an art course for your master's and vice versa? What are the implications? Is it possible Maybe to? I can, I can answer really quickly to that. Uh, yes, it is possible, but uh, you need to take additional exams and courses because uh, to access a master, you need to prove that you have a certain number of credits in the disciplines you want to study. So I know people who have transitioned uh, from one discipline to the other, but you need to take additional courses, and sometimes you also have to pay for that. So uh it might be tricky but it can be done thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much and uh, so we want to bring uh, this uh, session to a close now um we because we want to begin another session on the phd program so after the phd program we will take all our questions together again we ask our questions on the phd and also the remaining questions on the master's program 
So we will take about uh, two, uh, three to five minutes break now. We take three to five minutes break. Um, now, so we start shortly after three minutes or like after five minutes. So please stay on the line now and we will begin. This session, we will talk practically about how to apply for PhD and also the master's student can also bachelors can also learn how to apply for master's program on this session but then we will be very practical about how to make your applications the admissions the scholarships and everything so this is the session that most people are waiting for so please stay tuned so within short minutes five minutes so this is 12 40 we will start the on our time here italian time it is it should be 11 40 in nigeria time so we start 11 45 we open back 11.45 uh, Nigerian time. So,
So, hello guys, we are starting the session now. So if you are there, please just uh, let me see a thumb up if you are there. <laughs> yes, okay. If you are there, let's see the thumb up so that we can know you are ready for this session. For some people that are still that have left their phones or their laptops, please turn up. If you are still there, let us know. If you are still there, thank you, thank you for guys already showing the rations that they are still there, not gone to sleep. Let's see some more hands. And those on the YouTube as well, you can say hello for those uh, friends on the on live stream on the YouTube. So for now, those of us that have our hands raised, we can raise our, we can lower our hands. We are beginning a new session. So after this session, we have enough time to answer our questions. We have enough time to answer our questions specifically. So this session, we will we'll deal more with the PhD program in Italy. So we're starting right away. Come on, let me know if you are seeing my screen. Yes, I can see Come your on. screen. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yes, thanks. I can see your screen. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much. We don't want to waste much time again. So we are beginning this uh, session. If some of your friends have gone, please try to invite them back now as we are starting right away. So this is the PhD information session. And uh, my name, as we mentioned already, my name is Tosin uh, I'm also a PhD uh, candidate in, in the National PhD Program in Sustainable Development and uh, Climate Change, uh, uh, IUSS Parbia, and uh, in collaboration with the University of Messina. So I carry my research, carry out my research in the University of uh, Messina as well. So. These are the outline of what we will talk about or discuss because it's a discussion in this session. We see the introduction, approach for selecting the right PhD program, a call for applications, uh, general requirements, application timeline. How do we do the assessments for qualification? And then we open the floor for questions and the answer or session as well. So please, you have to pay attention to everything we are going to say. It's important now, everything you are doing, you might have to leave. If you are working, you might have to stay somewhere for you to understand. Because if you understand, you might not have too much questions to ask on this session, because I'm trying to make it as uh, understandable as I could uh, in this session, please. So introduction here what do i mean by this introduction i'm not defining what is phd but then i want to tell you what is obtainable what is uh, what are the benefits of doing your phd program in Italy, and the benefit and also how does the application look like first there's no need for gra if you're applying for phd program here in italy you don't have to write gra like we already heard during the preliminary sessions there are public universities and there are also private universities. So most of the public universities will not ask GRA from you. For PhD, you don't have to write any English proficiency test. I can tell you 100%. I do not write any proficiency test. 
I have a colleague here with me now. She does not write a perfect, uh, English proficiency test. Kama, she's there. She does not write an English proficiency test. So I'm correct with that. As well, there is no code email. You don't have to send code email to any uh, to any to any supervisor to any professors and all that. There's no need for a reference letter. Yes, in some cases you might be asked for me. I wrote a reference letter, but uh, from other colleagues, there's no reference letter. In the national PhD program, I submitted a reference letter. For some people, they didn't submit. No statement of purpose. For me, I wrote a statement of purpose. For many others, they did not write a statement of purpose. So in most cases, you are not asked for statement of purpose. In most cases, you are not asked for reference letter. Some might ask, some, some might, yes, yeah, some might ask. Most, most, most universities will not ask from you. Application fees, yes. Some will ask for application fees. Some will not ask for application fee. National PhD program will not ask you for application fee. I will make it. I will try to distinguish between those as I move on in my presentation. So PhD in Italy and in most Europe is three years, and uh, some can be four years. I'm sorry, I quickly have to accept some people that are just coming in. Uh, okay. So. So, Kama, I don't know if you have the right to accept the people that are coming in. No, I don't. Oh, sorry. I tried to make it the earlier. But... Okay. Okay. So, also, PhD duration is three years. In some cases, four years. Now, what is the for most PhD program? You can do your PhD program in English in any department. Once your supervisor can communicate in English, or once the co-supervisors, because it's possible that you have co-supervisors and all that, once they can speak in English, you can apply to any program. There's no restriction to apply to any program for any PhD program in Italy. The universities in the north, the university in the south. I can tell you that. So you don't have to worry about language when it comes to a PhD program. Of course, you can. You have to learn Italian language to survive normal daily transactions. You want to go to the bank, you want to go to the local market, you might need the language. I mean, so that is just your personal thing. You, it's, it's compulsory you do a study abroad, you know? Six months, you come to Italy for three years. Out of your three years, you still have to travel out of Italy, maybe to another European country, France, Germany, to the US, to the UK in a, in in a discussion with your supervisor so it's compulsory you have to observe six months study abroad i mean that is another part and that's another gc part of this program of phd program now i'm going to say this categorically and emphatically phd visa phd study visa to italy is sure within two weeks you will get your visa I'm repeating that for your PhD study visa is one of the surest thing you can get as far as Italian embassy is concerned. Once it is a PhD application, PhD visa application, once you submit it, it's just an express way because already is already funded. So and you you don't have to okay. My last point there: no proof of fund for admitted PhD students at Italian embassy. Wow, yes, wow. You do have to submit proof of fund. Maybe you have to have five million in your account, six million in your account, seven million in your account, just like for bachelor's master. No, for PhD, you don't have to show any millions of naira in your account. I'm talking now specifically for Nigeria and I have so you don't have to have you don't have to show any proof of fund, only show the acceptance letter, which contains the details of your scholarship and details of your program. That's all you have to submit at Italian University. Okay, so let's move on to very important discussion now. So this is general for our application. Maybe you're applying to UK, you're applying to US, and also specifically when you're applying to Europe and Italy. Now, two things. 
approach for selecting the right PhD program, focused disciplinary approach and interdisciplinary approach. I just dis I distinguish between these two. Your focused disciplinary approach is what you have been used to all the time. You finish from the Department of uh, Economics, you go back to the Department of uh, Economics to study one aspect of economics. You also go back there to study that same aspect of economics for PhD. I mean, that is what we are used to, you know, over and over or, you know, in that, in that sense. But then, when you are doing applications, PhD application, you have to look at it from a multidisciplinary approach, from interdisciplinary approach sometimes, so that you can get admissions. So that's why some people just focus on a particular discipline, focus on a particular course, and they don't have a diversified options. And that's why it's too difficult for them to get admission. Okay, so when you are looking at admission, maybe you finish, for instance, those in the Department of Education. I'm not sure you can actually find uh, an, uh, an application for, for a PhD admission here in Italy that will say, okay, that will tell you apply to education. No, you might not find. But then when you look at the whole applications, you will see in different uh, courses, different uh, call for application research topics because they will advertise research topics. So when you look into all those research topics, then you will see that, oh, this is, I have the capacity to do this particular research. Okay, so you have to look at interdisciplinary approach. You have to look at interdis interdisciplinary when you are applying. So if you finish from law, if you finish, for instance, maybe from uh, a college of medicine and all you are looking for is a course on that college of medicine it might not work that way you might see that there are other umbrella of courses you might get your particular your particular research you want to do in phd for example you might see it on that faculty of pub you might see it in public health okay so all that's all that you have to have it at the back of your mind when you are applying for a phd program not just focus on a discipline you also have to open your mind to interdisciplinary approach when it comes to PhD application. So all for applications. In Italy, we have majorly two types of uh, applications, the university-specific call for applications and the national PhD call for applications. I will explain. The university-specific call for applications is the application you see on each university website on each university website. For example, University of uh, Messina or University of Bologna, Bologna or University of Pavia, we announced the call for its admission, for its application into the different departments. And then you can make your applications. But for the national PhD, it's a collaboration between many universities, 20, 30, 50, 60 universities will come together to make to to make a call for a specific program that is of interest to italy that is of national interest to the ministry of university and research or to the government of italy do you understand so that is national phd call for application so we have many of those national phd now coming on board in italy that attracts students from different backgrounds different fields different countries, different cultures. So please, you have to look out for, for these specific uh, uh, calls, university specific calls for application and national PhD. So you can apply to many of them to diversify your options. So more or less like a practical section now, this is university specific call for applications. Right now, these applications that we have on board is uh, is what we call is the 39th cycle. Italy maybe uh, the 39th cycle means uh, like uh, maybe they started applications since so many years ago, and then maybe they call it first cycle, second cycle, third cycle, fourth cycle, fifth cycle, sixth cycle, twenty cycle. So they are in the 39th. Uh, maybe the, the, the 39th uh, uh, cycle or 39th year of PhD 
or applications, admissions, or graduation, whatsoever it is called. So that is why currently now for the next session, which will be 23, 24th session, is called 39th circle called for applications. These are the key words you are going to use when you are searching for PhD application. Please mind all these things I'm saying. The new session will be 23, 2023, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 24 session, which is the 39th circle. Those that were admitted recently that just started a program in October and November, where they were 38 cycle. For us now that we are in the second year, is 37 cycle. For the new people that will be coming in October and November, is 39th cycle. Okay, so this is what I have here 39th cycle. The nice circle call for applications. So if you copy that and paste on Google, you are going to find many applications. So it depends on you to choose your specific discipline to apply to. Kama, I don't know if people can still hear me. Kama? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so so with that, you can make your specific. Let me see if somebody is trying to come in. Okay. So with that, you can make your specific call for applications. So I'm going to try with the first one we have here. The first one we have here is St. Anna School of Advanced Studies, PISA. That's one of the lovely universities that you might want to study in. It has juicy privileges and opportunities. Now, I want to have this particular, I call it particular session. So I'm going to click on this link. We are going to go to the link of this university, St. Anna, PISA. St. Anna School of Advanced Study Pisa. So let's go together. So this is the website. Excuse me. So this is the website now. You can see it's St. Anna School of Advanced Studies, PISA. We want to look for admission. So because many of us, many of you, we maybe you might want to get across to us. So that uh, maybe we want to get across to us so that, uh, oh, how do I make my application? But then we want to just have this particular session so that you can see how easy it is and how you can quickly make your applications, you know when you are applying you can scroll down you can see here uh, admissions equipment and find that you can click on that once you click on that it takes you to the different aspect of the website you can see phd programs you can click on phd programs you see it gives you an overview of that phd and then just beneath you see phd in robot by robot is phd in in agro bioscience phd in earth science different fields you can find them there you can find different fit PhD in different programs. You can see PhD in data studies and all that. Now there is a call for application. They have that call, their call for application is available. If you click on that, you see it now. Because I want to just painfully take you to this section a bit to be able to see what we are talking about. It's a PhD in biorobotics, they have 12 scholarship positions available. Overall, they have 69 openings. With scholarship for the 39th circle for PhD programs. You can see it, uh, that's it. So this admission, this application is out now with many others. I'm going to send the links to you on the group so you that can begin your applications immediately. For biorobotics, we have 12 positions with scholarship. PhD in law, we have five positions with scholarship. PhD in human rights, we have five positions with scholarship. PhD in economics, we have four positions. PhD in management, we have eight positions. At CEO, at science, seven positions. I mean, you don't have any excuse. This is just an opportunity for us to actually uh, embark on. Okay, so you can look up, you can look at that after now, and then be able to make your applications because uh, after one as well, the same thing. You can also go to this link. I want to show you here also. Gun so Gun Salsa Science Institute, Lacula. This application is already open as well for your PhD program. 
Okay, you can see a PhD call for applications 2023, 2024, which is now open. So you are set to begin to make applications. I mean, uh, just the opportunity for everyone. Just opportunity for everyone. You know, you click on the call for applications. Once you click on the call for application, it will take you to what you need to know on the applications. Some of them offer free meal. And some of them we offer, we we give we offer free meal like lunch every day, and then your monthly or salary will also be provided. I just want you to see something here. Can you all see here as well? Now we have different positions here as well. After particle physics, ten scholarship available. Mathematics in natural, social, and life science, ten scholarship. Those in computer science, 10 scholarship. Those in regional science, 10 scholarship. Okay, you see here, official languages of the program is in English. You can see here, you can see the official languages of the PhD program is in English. Is in English, you can see here. And the duration, the program is starting November 4th, 2023. You can see the yearly gross amount. The yearly gross amount is 16,243 euro every year. So, and if you can read this part, you can see what it's talking about. First year PhD normally benefits from free accommodation. If you apply to this PhD program, free accommodation for the first year. In the second year, you have additional 350 euros to support your accommodation. Mm -hmm. You have free lunch, free lunch every day. Uh -huh. You don't have to fees to pay. So it's a good opportunity for you. Please don't miss all this opportunity. All this link will be available to you after. You can search more. There are many of them outside. Now they are coming. So I won't waste time on that again. Also for the National PhD Corp for Application, it's a collaboration between many universities. Okay. So for national, Italian National PhD in Artificial Intelligence, that call is not yet out. You can visit the website. Make sure you are checking every day. Once it is out, make your application. We will make the link available. National PhD program in autonomous systems. Please, you can make your application. Once it is out, we will send the link. Now, the National PhD in sustainable development and climate change. This is very juicy. And this is the program that I also belong to. Kia Lansa, who, make, uh, who, who spoke earlier on, also belong to this uh, program. This is the website. PhD in sustainable development and climate change. Okay. It's divided into six disciplines, six curriculum, health system and environment, social economy, risk and impact, technology, agriculture, theory, institution and culture, health and ecosystem. You cannot tell me that you cannot find your that you cannot find your discipline in this in this book. It covers all its research areas. So, Habib, can you please mute? Habib, can you please mute your mic, please? Thank you. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Kamal. So now the applications will be opened. Okay, let me show you this first. New fifty fully funded positions. This this. This scholarship entails 150 fully funded positions, six months of study abroad, three years program. I mean, in US, you have to study for five years. What is that? Here in Italy, your PhD is just three years on point. About 50 universities are participating, 150 research professors, about 150 research professors and about 150 fully funded positions i mean fully funded positions so this is what we are waiting for this one so this admission will be on 5th of may 5th of may and it will end in 30 june so please this is what we need to embrace and make our applications right so Having said that, you can make your searches, you can make further searches on Google, you can use uh, any means to find more applications link, 
and all that to to be able to make your applications now what are the general requirements because this is very important the general requirements to make your applications please listen carefully you need a valid identity card which will be in form of international passports meanwhile i don't know if it is possible if you don't have an internet of course if you are if you want to start an application you need that you need your you know that you need your international passport but I don't know if some university may accept your national identity card just to make your application for now. And then you can get your international passport later. But then it's very important that you have your international passport on ground. You need your passport photograph to make this application a passport. You also need international passport because the Applications are similar. They make what they, the Italian university system make use of what we call S3 platform to make applications. This S3 platform is unique and is similar in all the universities for PhD programs. So you are going to make your application on this website, on this, uh, on this link, on that university website. So, and you are going to need international passport, you are going to need your passport photograph. Now, for your educational qualifications, you are going to need your master's degree certificate. Your master's degree certificate. If your certificate is not ready, you can make use of your, uh, what is it called? You can make use of a uh, uh, statement of results. Okay. And then you will need your bachelor's degree certificate and then your transcript. Your transcript that is important is your master's degree certificate. Is your master's degree transcript. In fact, I don't think I submit my master's degree transcripts or somebody else. So she's not your submitting your bachelor's degree transcript is not as important. But you will need to submit your master's degree certificate and transcript. Now, research proposal. You must write a research proposal. This is part of the requirements. Okay. So writing a, writing a rich research proposal, we benefits your applications so what we have in italy is call for applications and when they make this call for applications they describe a project a research project that you will embark on in that particular department and so when you read those different descriptions of projects you say, okay i can do this i can do this one goes along with what i want to do then they will ask you to write a research proposal which will submit along other requirements Okay, please, we just put here how to shape your research proposal. You need a good title. The title will be there. Then you write an abstract just like, just like, a, 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 like, just like a component. What should be the components of your research proposal? A title, the abstract, of course, the title will be there. The introduction, literature review, methodology, expected results, expected impact, and references. We might not have time to do this, but then maybe during the question and answer, we can show you uh, some of this proposal we wrote, and then we can also send to you on the group so that you can have as a prototype when you are writing your research proposal. So it is very important that you write a good research proposal. Proof of English. Now, it's not proposed, like I said, to have uh, an English test for your PhD program. But then you can get a proof of English from your university. University, you finish your master's or you finish your bachelor's degree so that you can submit as an additional document if you want. Statement of purpose, like I said, some university may ask from you and some may not ask. You need a good CV to back up your document. Please and please put all the necessary experience that, that is in line with what you are applying for. It is important that you put all your experience, your educational background, everything you're passionate. Please ensure it is inside. And yeah, so if you have uh, professional qualifications, you can also include it as well. So application timeline, the application have started now from March to April application, from May to June application, June to July applications, and also September, the application also continue along with interview. Then October to December, people begin to do enrollment in the school and then they begin to welcome them to Italy. So this is how the application timeline goes. Application has started now to a hands uh, September and then October enrollment and then traveling down to Italy. 
how do we do qualification assessments? For the qualification assessment, your title, which is your educational background, your experience, your research proposal will be graded and the interview. Those three things. So please take note. So for example, we take note. So let's see this specific scenario here. Okay. So the grading for your educational background, sometimes depending on the university, they might have 50 for both your research proposal and your educational background. They might add it up to be 50. And then for your interview, they might score you 50. So if it's 50 plus 50, that is 100. Okay. This is applicant A, this is applicant B. So assuming applicant A score 14 with all your document that is submitted, and then you wrote, you write your research proposal, and it's over 30, and then you score 25 over 30. Okay. In the interview, which will be like the in the interview is just for you to defend the research proposal you have submitted. You they ask you some questions, and then you just talk about the research proposal, how you want to go about to do it, your methodology precisely. Okay, so interview you score 45. So 45 plus 25 plus 14, the first into the candidate score 84. So the second candidate also score 12, 23, 45, and overall it scores 80. So already, if they need to one candidate out of the two candidates, you know that applicant A already has the admission. So that's basically, that is how they do their qualification. So they grade everything, and then it's very transparent. You can see it. It's on their website. It's been published. So whatsoever is how you are able to how you manage to package your applications, and then you're able to see your score. So finally, that is just the overview of uh, applications in uh, PhD applications in Italy. And uh, we are open now for further questions and then we are ready to answer your question. What is important is you prepare your applications very well and you write research, a good research proposal, you package together, and then you are able to get scholarship. All the PhD programs in Italy, once you get the admission, is funded. So you are not thinking about, oh, no, 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 that's not like, so once you get the admission, it has been funded already. So thank you very much. We are open to your questions and answer at this time. Kama, Kama, can you take a uh, bit of the questions? Um, okay, at leader, right? Yeah. Yeah, from... Um, Most so questions have been on... Um, on master's program. Okay. No, you can just Someone ask asked. people to, to raise their hands as usual. And yeah, then... we have some hands that are raised, but I have just one question on Slido on, uh, that has to do with PhD. Do you need to have a master's to apply to a PhD in Italy? Yes, sir. <laughs> the person is actually... <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. Yes. Capital, doctor. yes. Now there are there are there are circumstances where some of the the students graduate in October and the session is starting in November. So most times the admission committee or the 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 panel allows you to apply with just your um your your, your certification. Like how do you put it in English? Now it's like your transcript that you you download from your own personal page. So you own official transcript. You can apply with that, but you must submit your transcript and your certificate of completion for masters before the 1st of november when you start the phd proper so it's a must then uh we i don't know i can't see any hand do we have hands sorry okay can we take k in day faucet if you're there unmute and ask your question <laughs> k in day faucet can you please unmute and ask your question? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you guys for this wonderful section. It's only God that can reward you guys. So my Thank question you. goes this. My husband is actually doing his, his PhD in Italy, okay. but he was not given um, he was not given scholarship. So he's okay. now thinking of switching to another school. So I so it was like you know, there are ways that some of these lecturers works. So he's thinking that will it not be a bad signal or something, or how can he secure a scholarship? 
because we are you know living i mean the inflation rate is quite high so we are looking for a way for him to secure scholarship that's it that's the main thing thank you uh tosi naive there to take her answer to answer her question no you can go ahead okay so personally i would advise he because it's really rare because those who don't get any of those uh, advertised scholarship usually get the funding from the supervisors and this is how it was now in my lab where i think about uh, my lab has also people from robotics so what happens is oh, there are three people that didn't get the scholarship but they were good in the interview so my supervisor picked one other supervisor picked the other two and that was it now these supervisors are paying them from their salary same amount same amount we get same amount those guys get so it's possible he needs to either talk to his um, supervisor or talk to the international officer look out for applications look out for uh, other scholarship opportunities in that line now another thing also is that uh, for the first year i know someone who for the first year was not on the scholarship but his supervisor drafted a gr uh, ap grant application you understand and when she secured the grant she now asked him to apply he applied and he got the, the scholarship so he lost one year but at least he now had a scholarship to continue so personally i would advise if your uh, your husband can do the same it will be okay and that will also help him um with um his stay because when he secures the second scholarship he's going to lose a year definitely but definitely he would um be able to secure funding that will assist him and family that's my own take i don't know if i'm able to answer your question thank Kengi. you yes thank you so much I really you're, welcome. That. you're welcome next we go to alim yusro i don't know if i pronounce it well pardon me in case i murdered your name alim yes, yes, yusro. You did. yes okay. you did. thank you so much for blessing this program like i really appreciate it now my question is if someone i think went to university and he passed through msc program and he had uh, he or she you know passed out with an mfu grade you know msc grades sorry have, can you start again because at the beginning you were breaking okay, up okay. you know yes i can I hear you yes hear you. thank you so much what i'm saying now is msc program okay has different grades we have PhD grade, MP PhD, then MPhil, and you know pass. So now what I want to now ask is that if someone came out with a with an MPhil grade from a university in Nigeria in the MSc program, can she now apply to the schools to schools in Italy for PhD? Okay, if I get you well, MPhil is Masters of Philosophy? Yes, yes, yes. That's the grade the person attained in the MSc program. I, I think if the course you're applying is in philosophy, I think you're good to go. Now, when you talk about grade, we also look at the number. Now, in Italy, I think Chiara made that uh, clear in the presentation. The grade is over one, 101. So for PhD, ideally, you should have 90, minimum 90 over 101 to get that. Now, if you want to convert to um, the our Nigerian um, grading system, that would be like equivalent of 80 over 100, I would say. I'm not too sure, but if you do the math, it should be around that 80 over 100. So if that's what they actually look out for, because in some of some of the calls, especially for engineering, I can speak for engineering and, and STEM, basically because um, that's my field. The, the most times, especially Politecnico di Torino and Politecnico di Milano, they put 95. In, in fact, there was one application call for PhD that they had to list 104 over 110, uh, over 110. 
So the, whether you it's MPhil or MBA or MSc or MENG, it's not the main thing. The main thing is the grade you pass the master's with. So for those that are still doing masters in Nigeria and they're hoping for the PhD, just focus on attaining a higher grade. Now that's also key to the Italian system that I have noticed. I've made several more than 50 applications. Yes, not only in Italy, but in Europe. So I understand they are very keen about this grade issue. Very keen about it. Some, especially the first one, Polito and Milano will always tell you, 95 above that's just the truth so just focus on the grading on the grade you get from the masters and especially your proposal basically so that's what i can say and your m field it should be in related field but if you want to move to interdisciplinary um phd then probably you would have to check with the international office and maybe the call for application that was posted on their website in order to get the key information relating or related to that particular field that's what i can say i don't know if i'm able to um answer your question so, so since, do you um, have any thank you so much yes 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 come on so to also add to what she's trying to say i think uh, she's talking about maybe also grading in the nigerian system when it's come to our master's program uh phd grade maybe she does not have a phd grade and she's asking if uh, it's still possible to make an application. Yes, you can still make your uh, uh, applications, you know, as well. You know, like I said, for the bachelor for your bachelor's degree, there's no too much emphasis on the bachelor's degree, whether you have two two or you have uh, whatsoever. But for your master's degree, you also have to uh, uh, perform very well, like uh, like. Uh, uh common have said earlier on so but then that does not need to discourage you uh if you make the applications with a good proposal and then with other experiences you have they also consider experience experiences yes please yeah. and please that's why i mentioned in your cv if mm -hmm. you have been doing something that is related to that particular field that you're applying for that particular research topic ensure you put all those experience inside your cv make measure of them tell them what you have done what you have achieved in those things and the impact you are you are making or you have made so that it can contribute because they are going to grade everything together like i said your title will be graded and so they will consider all those things to make your grade they will also grade your research proposal and they will grade your interview so everything together will make your overall score very transparent so thank you very much thank you sir now you. uh over to you, uh, Similolua, Similolua, or Isaya. Can you please ask your question? Uh, hi, guys. I don't have a question because I'm already in Italy. I'm a student of the University of Salerno. I just want to say that um, uh, I'm happy that you guys had this section because I was able to benefit from the session that um, the Habib said had. And I have some observations, especially about those people that you said earlier that are banking on the regional scholarship, especially for those people who have gotten admission. I think that should what i mean multi-tax is that now that you've gotten an admission you can be doing your translation and also be doing your your authentication like send your documents to abuja for authentication so that your translation depending it usually takes three to three to four weeks so once you send in your application to the translators so like you're, you're able to beat up time and your pre enrollment is you are waiting for your pre enrollment sent to the embassy and by april or may you could start your legalization so that your visa process okay. is faster especially for those people that want to meet up with the regional scholarship yes. and another thing about the regional scholarship i don't know for other places but in campania region in my school apart from the ICE, 
the grade also matters. You cannot get the same amount or you want to be paid first when you get 18 over 30. Somebody who got a better grade will be paid first. Sure. So you may have to wait. In my own region, I don't, I don't know of other people's region, but for example, those people with higher grades get um, their payments probably in December and why others may have to wait till February or March, depending. So that's one. And another thing I want to address based on my experience is that in as much as you are giving the accredited um, translator to translate your document, also try to check for um, numerical um, um, errors, like probably you got 60 in a course and the translator wrote 80 because you could also be sent back. And for those guys that have um, age, uh, attestation of age yeah. and whatever, yeah. you also need to yeah. make sure that whoever declared the age for you, whether your uncle, your brother, your father, your mother, make sure the signature tallies with the signature you are going to be presenting during your legalization. Because if it doesn't tally, you are going to be sent back. And another thing is that for those of us like me that have very long names or have name issues, please try to get an affidavit and also, because last year I had name issues and I had an affidavit and even a newspaper change of name. So if you can, try to get a letter from your school, especially if the mistake comes from your university. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yes. For me, it was yes. like a yes. university error. So they wanted to be sure that... I was the same person because these people also know that every everybody can get um, affidavit anywhere and everybody can publish a newspaper change of name anywhere. So they are aware of some of these things. So and another thing I also want to say is that in as much as uh, you are also, especially for those people that don't have the scholarship from the university, also mm. be smart about your proof of funds don't from like for example when you know that this particular account has not received five million and suddenly you are receiving five million it's a red flag and mm -hmm. for example if mm -hmm. you are receiving um five million probably you sold your car or your house you have to prove that you sold mm -hmm. your car your house or whatever if it's a rent or whatever or a loan or something it has to be proven because these guys want to make sure that you can take care of yourself throughout the duration of your of your stay, if it's two years or whatever whatever year you are spending. So I just want to chip that in. And for people that have um, name issues in their work, especially if you are going for masters, you may not need an affidavit for it. It is best you just don't legalize your work. But if your school requests that you legalize your work, then you may have to present an affidavit for it. So that's just what I want to say. And for those guys that also have that depending on regional scholarship, kindly note that you cannot, during your visa application, state to the embassy that you are on a regional, you are, you've gotten a regional scholarship. For me, I would advise, and that's what I usually tell people, when you've gotten your visa or when your visa is at TLS or at the embassy, you can now proceed with your income documents because I know someone last year who it was the photocopy that was submitted with his visa application and it became an issue. Thank and you. Yeah, that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We really appreciate the input. Now we go to the last person. Um, I think I don't know how to pronounce the name. Oh, there's an extra hand. Lumon Kaleb. I'm sorry if I murdered your name. Lumon Kaleb. Can you unmute and ask your question, please? Um, so sorry, come on, maybe after now we read some questions on Slido. Okay, after him then. After him then. Thank you. It's okay. The person dropped his hand. So maybe you can go ahead and read some questions from Slido. Okay. So, hello. Um, okay. Hello. Okay. Can yes. Me? We can hear you. You can hear you now. All right. All right. All right. So, as I said, I want to really appreciate you for what you're doing. I'm Lomon Kele from Nigeria. 
and part of my questions have been answered in the presentations but this one now now the funding that has been given funding that's been given does it cover your traveling costs no okay, no, no no it doesn't cover your traveling costs it's just for your um it's more like a stipend for you to stay your accommodation feeding and anything but you need to sponsor yourself from nigeria down here and at the oh. end of your program you also need to transport yourself back to nigeria yes oh. or anyway yes thank you thank you you're welcome yes over to you so, too soon yeah so uh you said uh maybe come on guys. what is the plan for students with a spouse what is the family plan available in italy okay so uh, for for a student with spouse for masters you need to prove a lot you need to prove an income i think um you need to uh, there's a document you need to file in for with um most of the com we call it commune i don't know how to say it in english now sorry sir can you um mute and okay thank you so i don't know how to say it in english but in italian it's a commune it's an office it's more like a, a center where we um you you do you apply for most of the things that has to do with your area now a specific area they can just pick um, a particular location they will map it out and give it an office more like uh, with other immigration services there where you can register for accommodation like you register as a resident of that location and everything now in the commune basically you do the application and there are so many things first of all you need to check your accommodation is it fit for extra person now italians work with measurements the square meter and all those things they need to check they know how many square meter is fit for one person how many square meter can accommodate two uh three with family and all that so they need to check all those things they need to check your finances is the the most important one for them you must have an income that they know a family can survive on so for master students that regional scholarship or that scholarship you are getting is not sufficient basically for them so you must really prove to them that finances so basically if you want to move with your family i suggest a phd offer for the phd is very effortlessly and another thing is i would advise if you really want to come with your family probably you can come as a student masters and then when you come at the end of your master's program or while you are here or you and your spouse can apply for the program together and you move over and that's basically what i would suggest now there are so many couples that have done it i know some that okay they came for masters and while they were doing their masters as soon as they finished they got the phd and they started applying a master or a bachelor for their spouse and before you know the spouse came and so she, number, she's not dependent on him because if you have someone dependent on you, you need to have a very high income. But this one, she came with a different scholarship and she's not dependent on them. The only thing you need to do here to legalize your, your marriage, yes, you have the certificate, but you need to go to the Nigerian embassy over here in Italy in order to, to legalize. There's a document they need to give you that you will bring to um, an office in Italy here that um, they will legalize that, okay, they will recognize you as spouses basically that so that's all i can say and um yeah that's basically what i would say concerning your spouse it's just to be wise even as a phd if you are moving your wife if you are here for example i'm here i want to move my spouse down here they need to search they will need to check if i have a contract for this house okay my finances might be okay for them but i need to have a contract for this house and they need to check if it's convenient to bring another person if it has the capacity so all these are put into consideration. So for me, I always advise people, you want to move with your spouse, do the needful. Let your spouse apply for a, a, a master's program or so, and then the person can move with other applications which are very feasible for people coming in. Yeah, that's the solution I can give to people. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Soon. Thank you, thank you. So it's uh, winding up with a question. He said, what is the total number of pages required for a CV? What is the total number of pages required for a CV? For me, I will say your CV should not be more than two to three pages. Yes, uh, yeah, for my own application, my CV was no more than three pages. And I know someone that came in last year, three pages with, with important information for your PhD program. You want to ensure that relevant 
information, experiences, educational background, achievements that is relevant to the program you're applying for must be included. But then it should not be within two to three pages is very much okay for your CV. Thank you. I don't you. know if there's like some answer I didn't raise, I don't know. Yes, I would I would go back to those. I just saw so we don't miss the ones that sent through chat. I think this ones they moved, they left the meeting and came back. So they can't you can't assess the slido uh slido this thing. So this person asked about um is publication key in granting PhD admission? Not necessarily. Most times they don't put it in the application call, call for application, most times. But if you have it, it's also an added advantage. But if you don't have, I never had uh, a publication when I applied. And um, I'm not sure if Tosin has, but for me, I didn't have. And a lot of people I know didn't have um, a publication, basically. Because the yes. PhD is really supposed to, 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 to help you build you into the researcher and everything. So they will not put it as a major um, requirement. That's what I understand. Person. Yes, you are very correct. Yes, you are very correct. It's not a key, it's not, it's not indicative of anything, it's not compulsory. If you have added advantage, if you don't have, so it's not it's not does not mean anything. So this question here, before you read another question, you can just monitor the question on the chat. There's some question mm -hmm. on the slide. They say, can I put an application for a PhD program with my master's waiting results? Yes, I mentioned that earlier, you can because, but you must, after getting the admission, you must provide the result before the 1st of November. That's key. If you don't have, you lose the scholarship. Simple as that. Okay. Mercy Aluko, please ask a question. Sorry, let me leave this last question before I go to Mercy. This person asked, does university offer postgraduate work permit? Now, what do you mean by postgraduate work permit? Olua Shewon Nice. Because if I on I really don't understand the question, but what do you mean by postgraduate work permit? Is it after your graduation or can can Messi nice unmute and ask the question? Let me understand clearly. Okay, let's move to Messi Aluko. Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Please, I want to know, are there opportunities for arts, courses in arts and humanities? Because much emphasis have been laid on sciences. Okay. I think if you followed my presentation or maybe you came late, yes, there are. Um, scholar, scholar normale, something, I, I, I mentioned it in one of my presentations. Uh, this is a scholarship for um, people in art. The scholarship for masters covers all the scholarship listed for masters, like subject, basically, aside the art of scholar scholarship. Now, the other ones are usually are mostly for um, the, 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 the science. Now, this particular program, I mentioned it earlier, but I think we missed it or you missed it. Um, I'm trying to go back to my slide. Scuola Normale Superiore. It's for the PhD and it's for Art and Humanities. Yes, all their okay. scholarships are Art and Humanities for PhD. Scuola Normale Superiore, basically. So there are opportunities for that. But for Masters, all the scholarships we've been mentioning, it covers that. And the SDC pro program also, even though it's climate change, but I know there are some finances like finance courses and accounting that has to do with sustainability and all that that also are part of that but I, you need to check i'm not too sure yes. thank you very uh, much I, I can contribute to that uh to the person yeah. to messi your yes italian universities cover every aspect like i said so art and humanities like uh, i showed you the slide earlier on and when I was uh, presenting, I uh, show you the courses on that sustainable development and climate change. It cover every discipline, every discipline, whatever. You, you are just under the umbrella of sustainability. Every sectors and every disciplines and every field now talk about sustainability. So whether you're under institutions or theories and cultures and arts and languages, just like uh, Lansa, Kaya Lansa is uh, under language, right? She's under language, one of our presenters, one of our speakers. So, whether you're under art and humanities, 
you your course is highly welcome for you know in PhD program. There are a lot of PhD programs on art and humanities that has been covered, and the applications are currently on as well. Sorry, uh, Kama, I saw the next hand here. Omotola Ayeni. Omotola Ayeni. The end is All right, here. thank you very much, Sanma. You're welcome. Omotola Ayeni. Yeah, good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you are. Good afternoon. Yeah, so my name is Emmanuel Omotolani, sorry, and I want to appreciate everyone, especially the scholars who organized this um, program. Uh, my question is, what's the plan for a medical person, like either in terms of medical, um, human or dentistry or any, what is the plan in Italy? Uh, I just want to know about that. Not for masters or PhD, or generally, even if it is work, not just academic. So, Sin, you want to go? Okay, let me just say something I know. Okay, I have a okay. friend who's a medical student at the moment. So, um, as a medical student or a medical uh, personnel coming from uh, any other country outside Europe, when you get to any European country, now I'm saying any because I have um, information from about three. Uh, different European countries where I've been to and uh, I have three friends that were there and because their their medical certificates were not from those countries they have to go through an exams to qualify and be certified first before you can practice so if you're a medical personnel moving into Europe you just need to put it at the back of your mind or before coming you need to find all the details including veterinary doctors by the way because I know someone that moved to Netherlands and couldn't practice. So including, he had to do the exams. So you, you need to just put at the back of your mind that when you move, you need to write the, the exams. You need to qualify, certify, pass, and be certified before you can practice. And that's just it. Then um, most times, yes, most times it takes, it, it takes time, but not to. So personally, I would advise people if, you are not a medical person and you want to study medicine you can come here after all it's the same years and it's even faster here because nigeria with the strike and all it's still six years down here so you can come here and still um do your six years at the end of your six years you get your certification and you can practice then if you want to go further then uh, you go for that's what uh, this lady was talking about they call it a master you do one year course or two years course in order to uh, specialize in an area or something basically but the information is still skeletal from my end so we need more information from um their website if, they, if it's a school you are coming you need to check with the international office if you want to come for a uh, work or maybe part-time program or something you still need to reach out to the organization and uh, find out more details from them all right thank you so much then my second question okay. um because in the midst of all this scholarship of a thing we are talking about for phd yeah. students is yeah. there a room for accommodation because it's very important we can't just go there and be stranded so what's the plan is the package also including accommodation or you are ready to accommodate us when we come there so we just want to know <laughs> Thank you. We one of the presentation Tosi me. Tosi, do you want to take this? Oh, I should proceed. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you want, but then you can answer as well. Okay, go ahead. You can. <laughs> of course, we are not going to accommodate you. Uh, we are just here to. I don't know of Kama, but for for myself, I don't think there's a room for that. So. Uh, yes your scholarship already covers they already factor in your feeding for phd students they already factor in your feeding your accommodation everything to the monthly salary you receive which okay which also covers the old year as well based on their economy here right so your account maybe for example you are renting an apartment for 400 euro or 300 euro or 500 euro is already factoring into your basically their monthly salary is about 1200 euro if you follow my presentation i show the amount of money or salary you receive mm -hmm. every year i show yes i showed it after mm -hmm. tax so, so and that and that includes all your feeding and that we take care of you 
throughout the whole month, throughout the whole year, and there's nothing to worry about for PhD students. For master, it's slightly different because uh, they take care, they give you an apartment, they give you feeding, and they give you just small token for masters. But for PhD, they give you yourself, so you are the one that knows how to distribute it into various uh, aspects of life. And so if you are the type that like enjoyment too much, so but then, so you know how to manage yourself. Actually. And to add Thank to that. You. Uh, if you're on the departmental scholarship, most times they give accommodation. I know someone here in Nigeria who got the department scholarship for his PhD, and the department for his first year was free accommodation. So he got accommodation with one of the residents where I am staying currently. I pay, I pay every month, but he was on free for his first year. So after yes. his first when he started so if you're lucky your university and you got the departmental most times the department covers accommodation and also your what do you call it uh health insurance the health in insurance, fact but not some covers. some covers your feeding i mean at least one meal yeah. per day yes so this exactly. is totally different one meal per day i went to pizza i mean and i was there for the program i had two times in a day in the uh, school of PISA. So I released some links, I released some of those uh, presentations I made, I showed some about two schools, which give free lunch and also support accommodation. Your first year is mm -hmm. accommodation free. And yes. then in the second year, they also give you 350 euros. Aside your monthly salary, they give you 350 euros to support your accommodation. So I don't I don't know what else that person wants. It's just a journey. <laughs> so these are just the available. Now another thing you know is uh, well from my education. So I need to answer the question before I leave. Sorry, I'm staying in a, in a in a residence in in a hostel, so I can't accommodate someone at the moment. But hopefully, maybe when I move to an apartment, everyone is welcome. <laughs> thank you. Yes, Olo Chuku Emmanuel. Right, thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, thank you so much um, for this opportunity. And uh, we're really grateful. Because I just want to ask, um, maybe you must have said this because I didn't join on time. Sorry to take you back if it has been said already. Um, what's the duration for uh, a PhD? I know in the US, PhD is five years, where they ask you to and the first two years is for like a master's then the, the three years remaining is for the phd so i don't know if it's the same over there if coming over um you're going to start another master's before you start your phd proper like they do in the us okay to outside, okay. To outside. why is it April? okay okay to answer your question is um it's three years and that's why I'm not, I didn't go to the US. <laughs> after my PhD, after my master's, I wanted to go to the US, but when I did the math, there's no need. Why go to the US and spend five years? And sometimes the five years is still tentative because you could not, uh, you might get up to like six years without finishing the PhD if your, your, your project is a bit tough and you're not getting results. So I opted for here. It's three years maximum, but if you want extension, they can extend, but I think the maximum extension is six months. That was what my supervisor told me. If I if I don't finish in three years and I want extension, the maximum is six months. But you can only request for three months extension, and then if after the three months you are, but those three months and six months is without funding, mind you. Yes, very important to mention that it's without funding. So whatever you need to do, you need to finish everything in six, in three months. When your funding is ending, you are done. Period. Yes, I mean, that is the beauty part of our PhD program here yeah. in Italy, just three years. So at the end, uh, number of years. So what's the next person on the line? Ola Ayeni. Hey, thank, thank you, you so much for this um, if you, program. If you have asked your question, can you please drop your hand? Thank you. OK, thank you so much for this. Um, this program it's been really high opening so at some point i kind of left so i don't know if you've answered this question but i like like now in the uk you get 20 hours as a student to work so i don't know about the job opportunities is there a language barrier like if you don't know italian if you might not get a job 
or I don't know, even if it's a menial job like cleaning, like is there are there job opportunities for international students? So should in case you didn't get the scholarship or you get there late, if there's something you can do to support yourself in Italy. Mm, okay, I've been in Italy now, and I would say for like five years, though I, I went back to Nigeria and came back again. But one thing I would say is there's a language barrier. And uh, I wouldn't advise anyway because I'm in STEM and how uh, hectic and rigorous their educational sector is. See, you, are, you, are, you people are seeing a cut off mark 18 over 30. In your mind, you'll be like, it's easy. Trust me. <laughs> It's not easy. Those that did masters here, it's not easy to get that. Probably maybe because I did engineering, but it's not actually easy to get the 18 over 30. So it's usually very hectic and sometimes your lectures and everything. So to get a part time, it's an additional burden. Sometimes you don't even have the time. One. Now, secondly, straight to your, uh, your question, um, there's a language barrier. Most of the jobs, whether cleaning job or the delivery jobs which is the most common for international students here is very very difficult why <laughs> you need to communicate in italian if you're doing a laundry job okay fine they hand you over all the equipment for cleaning and they're asking you to go and clean the room or they have a complaint how do you understand what they see and some of them would refuse to talk to you in italian especially those i don't want to say uneducated god help me I'm trying to find the word. Those that are um, not uh, have not been to an international community, let me put it that way. Yes, those that have not been to an international community. Like it's difficult for them to understand English, let alone to communicate with you in English. So that language barrier is there. Now there are jobs opportunities everywhere for either internships, but most times it requires you to have a certain level, at least the basics of Italian. So you, if you have that in mind that you want to come and work alongside your study, I would advise you to start learning how to um, in learning Italian on Duolingo before coming, so that it will not be a a a, a, um, a, a hassle for you basically. So just start learning the Italian before coming, and then there is a certain number of hours you must not exceed if you must. Um, um work because the money is coming into a bank that is linked to your codice fiscale it's like your tax code basically so if the money coming in definitely the government will know you're working more than the hours and there's a way they, they they monitor those things so you need to understand that in order to be able to stay here and the easiest i would say is from your university the international office usually have calls they call it bandu that they can give you uh, work study opportunities and maybe some internships. Yeah, you can also do internship with some professors in the lab. I did one uh, with a geophysics instructor then in, 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 in Torino. So you can also do um, internships and they, they can pay you some, some small um, amount of money and you'll be fine. Okay, okay. So, so thank, thank you. Thank you, Kama. And uh, we want to be rounding up now because uh, we are uh, yeah, uh, we spent a lot of time on the question and answer. So please, those that have raised, if you know we have answered your question, just put out your hands. And for those that are remaining now, we only see those those people that I can see now. We just call them, and there's no further reason. So he okay. can drop it. Answered Godwin. So it's just. Okay, so I'll answer. I'll be able to answer. I'll be able to answer. Yes. Oh, wait. Okay, so. Godwin, we didn't answer your question. No, so, I haven't asked the question yet. Ah, okay. Okay, so, so please, uh, we we answer your questions, but uh, we will just uh, take short, short time in answering those questions and be very specific, straight to the questions, and then we will give you specific answers immediately to save the remaining time. So those people on the line, I will answer your question. Olu Shukin, man, please do your hands if you have answered your question. So I do have to too. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for your efforts. God bless you. I reward you. And my question is just, do I came late? I want to just know. I had something about the PhD that uh, traveling down there, it should be your, at your own expense. I want to know, I want to ask, what about for masters? I don't want to pay for your coming down there to Italy. Because do I came late? So I want to know about the masters too. Um, 
is there any link we can get opportunities, scholarship opportunities like that for the school in its day like that? How we can get the link so that we can know the opportunity that is on now? Um, okay, so quickly, can I remember the question? So you are asking, yes, there are masters, uh, there are scholarships available for both masters and PhD. We've already deals with that already very well in our presentations. Kama dealt with uh, the masters, you know, quite uh, extensively, and also dealt with the PhD quite uh, extensively. Applications are currently on, currently on, and there are scholarships available for the masters program. You know, the regional scholarship is there. We took time to explain how you can get it and that the regional scholarship can only be effective when you arrive here in Italy. But then you make your applications in Nigeria and then you have to have your documents uh, ready, which is family income, okay, uh, which will bring along when you are coming to Italy so that your scholarship can be very effective. And for the PhD application, every PhD pro program you applied for is already fully funded. Your PhD program is fully funded, so you don't have anything to worry about. As for how do you come here? Yes, you are going to sponsor yourself to come here. Your tickets, your flight tickets, your cost of uh, flight and the cost of visa application is covered by the applicant himself or herself to come in. But once you are here, you are able to receive your income and salary or the benefit for scholarship as the case may be for master's program. Your apart, you have a free accommodation. You have free feeding and then you are given some token for phd program you are given monthly salary to answer your question quickly thank you so much i really appreciate that thank you. you're welcome uh godwin please quickly okay thank you very much for this um opportunity i was going to ask if the phd again is totally free and you just answered that and but i want to know if it's in all universities in italy secondly i want to know if there are application fees we have to make while we're applying for the PhD program. And then thirdly, I want to find out if there are opportunities for work after completing a PhD, or we have to come back to Nigeria. And then finally, how do we contact you after now? How do we get in touch with you? Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope we can remember the questions. Uh, I'll answer the yes, one I remember. Kamala, Kamala we also come uh, to, my, to our haze. OK, first, uh, uh, for the PhD program, uh, Yes, fully funded. Okay, can I remember some, Tamara? I can remember the question he asked me um, okay. about living after your PhD program. Um, no, you can stay back because you get a residence one, and that's what I'm answering. I'm answering um, what's her name, uh, Olua Shown Nice. The question she asked if you get permit. Now, after your graduation, let's say you graduate in June and your permit is expiring in December. Now, you graduated in June, your permit is expiring. When you renew, they will give you one year residence permit for you to look for a job in Italy. And uh, in that one year, now what most people do is they keep looking for jobs everywhere in Europe because that residence permit would help you go anywhere in Europe. So once you get a job somewhere in Europe, you can move to that place. Or if you get in Italy, you stay back and start the job, basically. And when you are renewing for the next year, they are now renewing on a work permit. But if you move to another country, then the other country or the company would have to uh, renew your permit for that country, basically it. But they are not asking you to move back to your country, no. And this applies both to master's and uh, for PhD, basically, yes. Thank you, Kama. I Is think there are some questions, questions because, that we didn't get. Can you remind us if there's anyone that was missed? Is there any question we missed from you? application fees how um do we have to make application fees well, yes yes uh, apply and PhD how program. can we contact you after now yes ah, for okay. phd program for phd program yes for some universities some universities we ask you for application fees for example university of Messina, we ask you but then national phd program will not ask you for example national phd program is sustainable development and climate change you will not pay any application fee and some universities too you will not pay application fee you know, some universities have started rolling out the application now. We show you the link the other time. So many of them will be available on the group. So you are asking, how can you contact us? Join, click on the on the chat. You will see the Telegram group. Just click on it and join everybody. You will see the link we sent to the chat now, which is the Telegram group page where we are bringing everybody to. You can continue to ask questions and then 
the other materials you might need for your applications, your research proposals, uh, and all of that, and how to write your CV. We show you a copy of how to do those things because we want you to get the admission. So all those things are available there. So thank you. Okay. Oh, oh, oh good, oh, oh, good job, Jude. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry for murdering you. Hmm. Jude. Like uh, we are missing Jude. Okay, I think the last person here, uh, Wali at the Joker. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, Jude. Okay. Good afternoon, Jude. Good afternoon, Jude. I'm also here. Good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Please, I want to, I want to, I want to um, confirm something, ma'am. This master's um, scholarship, because I, if I should go at all, it's for master's, master's scholarship, ma'am. Okay. And, yes, ma'am. And I want to confirm, please, ma'am, how and um, what are we needed? Are we going to pay for anything or is just 100% free scholarship? Okay, uh, probably you missed the master session and um, the scholarships like we mentioned, if you get the scholarship, then you have some stipends to keep you both to sponsor your accommodation and your feeding. But I mentioned earlier that the regional scholarship, which a lot of people depend on, which is the EDZU and it's free. Anyway, the Iranians are cashing out on that scholarship a lot. So that one would definitely if you're able to get a phone it, it keeps you uh in the accommodation and you just have to be feeding yourself and the money they give you is sufficient except if you want to live like uh comfortably for the two years you will be staying now that's it but i will not tell you it's totally free your your living is free. your your scholarship tuition fee is free but your living expenses i will not tell you it's free no it's not okay okay ma so for instance now if i applied if um the link is finally sent and i registered and god help me i become successful so um am i needed to for my transportation down there i will be the one that will pay yes i think yes okay. i think uh, someone asked that question and the answer is to yes you sponsor yourself oh. Yes, okay, ma'am. And, and accommodation and accommodation too. I'll be the one that will accommodate myself. Yes. And you will be the one to accommodate yourself, except if you got uh you get the what do you call it, the regional scholarship that offers accommodation feeding and the stipend. If not, you would have to pay for your accommodation and everything. Okay, ma. Like, like, okay, like if okay, ma. I just want to confirm, ma, because I'm a I'm a typical um, Igbo man. I want to know, ma, like if I'm being selected now, and and um, I don't know the, how much from from Nigeria to Italian. How much can we just look at it in Nigerian money? Okay, at this point, I would not be able to tell you. But one thing I'll advise you: first of all, you need to. Um, check with the inflation rate everywhere because everywhere there's inflation and so we can't be able to give you a precise amount so you will be able to do the research on your own part and then uh if you join the link probably you have more questions you can drop your questions there so can we can uh, proceed and round up the meeting is it possible thank you um please if we okay. answer your question can you please drop your hand thank you uh I saw ma, 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 please the link, ma, the link now. So that I will so. in the chat. The link is in the chat. I added it again. It's in the chat. So uh, uh I will call on Waliat. 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 Is I'm still here. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Good afternoon everybody. everybody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm join bit late the msc program because particularly i'm interested in the msc program so like i don't know when they're having the section i want to ask that is it a must for an msc program for me to have either high tiers or tofu or gre before i'll be considered for scholarship and secondly i would like to ask maybe the scholarship 
is a full scholarship and I did a partial scholarship for MSc program. Actually, my MSc program will be based on chemistry, MSc. So, like, I would like to ask maybe, okay, maybe the program, maybe there is a full scholarship program for MSc. And if there is no full scholarship, like, if there is no any scholarship, maybe I was given admission. Is it easy for me to come down there based on working and study? I don't know how easy it is over there. So, I would like to ask those questions. Thank you. Okay, so to briefly answer your question, uh, oh, because oh, of time, that that would like that would be likely be our last question, um, that because some people are just joining and they are continuing to ask us. So no, can we, we take this um, last question? Because after Waliet, I think there's this Anu, the last person, because we've answered Jude, and um, Yusuf has been here. I saw his hand earlier. He dropped. He came back. So just these two. We're not taking anybody. Please don't raise your hand again. Just these two. Okay, so. Please. Yes. So to answer your question, then we dealt with almost all your questions in the sessions concerning masters and um, this. Now the thing is, you we, we have a lot of scholarship, not just the regional. We have a lot of scholarships. Some of them are coming from the department. Some of them are coming from the university. Some of them from the Italian government. Some of them from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Italian Ministry of, um, of Foreign Affairs. So please, we we would love that you drop, um, you add, you you join the Telegram group. As these opportunities are unfolding, we'll be dropping the links and questions that will come up, we will be able to answer them. So, and if you have opportunity, you can rewatch the session on YouTube so you can get all the information that are needed. Now, I'm talking about personally, I'm an advocate of just do your stuff, focus on your studies and work study, basically. Looking for extra job will distract you. I know someone that spent five years for a bachelor's degree of three years. The bachelor's degree was three years. He has spent five years and still had to drop out because he chose to work. Now he has he has dropped out. So this is my own. After spending five years, you should have gotten your master's, not only bachelor's, but he has dropped out because he was working and st studying. So personally, I'm not an advocate of working and studying. Focus on your studies. And then work, uh, work. Thank you. Then for the other questions, you can watch the session on YouTube, please. Thank you, ma. Um, Anu, no, let's do Yusuf before Anu. Anu will be the last person. Yusuf, sir. Hello. Good one, everybody. Good afternoon. Please, um, I've been trying to get in touch since, but I think um smart. So my question goes thus. I'm a graduate of mining engineering. So I want to ask if there is any opportunity uh, in terms of MS program in the lines of mining engineering. So, and is it fully funded? If I say fully funded, means that are they going to pay us um, like tuition? They're going to, um, the scholarship is going to take care of the tuition fee, um, the accommodation, um, and then um, the stipend, monthly stipend. So, and one more thing is that the PhD part of it, is it direct PhD? Is there any opportunity for direct PhD? So without doing um, any master's program before the PhD. So, and is there any school in Italy that usually accommodate mining engineering? Now, I know mining engineering um, courses usually scarce. So I want to know if there is schools in that Italy that I can apply to in terms of scholarship. So, so that's my question. Thank, Thank you. you. So I'm a petroleum mining engineer engineering oh. graduate from Politecnico di Torino. Yes, I did my master's in petroleum and mining engineering from Politecnico di Torino. So probably you check. Now the world is changing because the world is completely fighting anything petroleum, anything petroleum. So I don't know if the course is still available or they changed the name from uh, petroleum and mining engineering, but I, I think they should still have the course. Now, and when you apply, if there are scholarships, usually the scholarship comes under STEM or engineering. And we dealt with that in the uh, in, in, in the sessions that we did for master's students. So maybe you have to rewatch the videos and see the different scholarships that are available in that aspect. But I can tell you for one, Politecnico di Torino has um, a course in uh, mining engineering. Yes, uh, but I, I, I did the course, yes. So that's all I can say on that. 
then for okay. your funding okay. so many scholarships available you can go to you can rewatch the session on youtube i think the link has been dropped earlier you can watch the, the the session on the youtube and it's not you can check the university website for, for in-depth details okay so the last uh, question what about the direct PhD? is there, uh, is there anything of okay so ah, okay it's not possible so, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> yes it's not possible for, it's not possible you must have your master's degree certificates because even results. germany and us that gives direct phd it's usually five years and it means the first two years you're doing your master's but in italian system they can't give you you just have to provide that transcript that master's transcript and certificate you have to provide it thank you okay, last thanks. question yeah i know lower for bank calling thank you so much for this enlightening session so i have two questions the okay. first one will be um when i joined i joined for the phd session and then i saw um um mr afeni for was um presenting on sustainable development and then something caught my interest socioeconomic risk and impact because it sounds like um, a business aspect of things because I'm quite interested in business administration and management for PhD. So the first thing now is, are there scholarship PhD positions and scholarships for business management or business administration or management? Or is it that to get such positions is mainly for STEM and engineering? So that's, that's the question I have. And if they are for business administration and then management, can we get links for those? so that we can search and start applications. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your questions. And uh, so I, I guess with that during the session of the PhD applications and admissions, the sustainable development and climate change is just like an umbrella. That's an umbrella that covers every discipline. It, the program itself is a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary program. So it contains every field, every aspect, every discipline, whether you are, belong to arts, you belong to social science, you belong to science, you belong to engineering. So all of us are under this program. And it contains, it takes, last year, it takes about 150 positions, 150 students, 150 candidates. Mm -hmm. Okay, this year too, I think it's going to continue as well. So whether you, so social and economics, will, yes, that is a good aspect. So it's under that sustainable development and climate change. You can apply and the application will start as from 5th of May. So on the Telegram group, join so that you will have the link when the form application is totally out. But at the same time, you can always search yourself on the internet just type uh, national phd program in sustainable development and climate change in italy it always bring out every information it will take you directly to the website and then you can get ready on as from 5th of may so every field in let me just say this in summary you can apply to any program you are studying in italy every program you study in nigeria from your bachelor's and master's is available in italy even education though you might not see department of education in most universities in italy but where you want to do your research you can you that's why i told you about interdisciplinary approach earlier on so when you when you see from an interdisciplinary approach, you can see the research feed that goes in line with what you want to do. So from there, you can make your applications and then uh, have your admission. So the PhD program in Italy is very rich, three years, fully funded. And you can, if you want to stay after, like uh, Kama explained, you can stay, obtain your work permit, and then you can begin to do your work and all that. So it has been a wonderful Thanks, session. It has been a wonderful session here this morning. Uh, I hope we've taken our time to explain to you everything you need to know from Kama, who, took, who talked about why studied in Italy, to, uh, to Kea Lanza, who talked about Italian system, to Adeleke, who talked about the master's information session, and uh, also Harry, that talked about the PhD applications and admission. I want to thank all our guests, I want to thank all our speakers, I want to thank uh, everyone. Uh, Kama is still here. Tosin, Esther, Afenifor, too, is the 
who is handling the logistics and uh, everyone, the audience, thank you for your participation, please. Uh, I want you to give a thumb up to the speakers. Uh, in those of you that say, many give thumb up to the speakers, as in, yes, yes, thank you. So that's, they've done a lot and they've put in their best to make this uh, program a success. Thank you very much. Make sure you get the link before you go, because that is where we're going to continue our discussion and uh, further information that we may have for you. So you can also search those information yourself on the internet, please and please. The applications are out. Many of them will be closing soon, and some will be coming out as well. So please make use of this opportunity. We want to see many of you in Italy coming October and November. Thank you so much. Kama, your passing words. Yeah, thank you so much for staying this long. And uh, we really appreciate and thank you for gracing this event. And most importantly, I still want to remind you the issue of deadlines. Please and please, the issue of deadlines is very important. Make sure you don't miss deadlines for applying, deadlines for scholarship application, and deadlines for everything. And try not to be inte um, intellectually lazy by that. I mean to do the work yourself, please. Don't depend on us because we are researchers and we really don't have time, to be honest with you. We really don't have time. We can sacrifice a few moments to talk with you, to mentor and uh, help with other things. But the truth is we don't really have much time like that. So do the work yourself and uh, let's see. When we see the enthusiasm, I'm working with someone now. I saw the enthusiasm and I'm ready to go with her to the end. So we need to see the work from your own end. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you soon in Italy coming this year. Ciao. Make sure you click on the link, join the group if you want to continue to enjoy this uh, richness. And then you can send the link of the YouTube to other. You can rewatch the video on the YouTube as well. Please we watch the video, share with others because it's not just for you. Now you have consumed it. Then let others as well have a feeling because we, we want to give as many as possible people this orientation as to not just to rush only to UK or to US. There are opportunities. Can you send the link, sir? Please. The, the link, link is available. On the, the link is available on the charts. Please copy. So we, we, we will leave the uh, this call open for about two minutes so that people can click on the link. So we will not uh, shut down the, 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 the call now for about two, three minutes. But then we have come to the end of the meeting, so we can all leave. Thank you so much for your coming. For them, we'll be open in about two, three minutes so that you can have the link. Thank you. See you at other times. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome, Once you speak French, so I'll be an Italian to us. Bye bye in Italian. No, bye bye is ciao, and it can be bye -bye. arrivederci. Bye -bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Ciao. I think we can start leaving. Yes. So. Don't forget to join the Telegram group before you leave. Yes, we answer the question on the slide. Yeah. Well, I think we answered all the questions on slide. Yeah. Yes. We to, no, yeah, we might need some questions, but then we answer some specific. We've answered all the questions on slide. Yeah. I think so. Ah, someone asks yet to accept the admission by not paying the 200 euros admission fee. Please, what advice can you give? What is 200 euros admission fee? I don't really know. Maybe the person got admitted and was asked to pay or something. I don't know. Which university would this be? It's not It's not 200. It should be 156. Wow. That's, no. Yeah. I paid 200 in my 2017, but now it's 156 everywhere. Samuel, so, please, that's the link. I just posted the link again. Please, man, can you send the link to the video on, on YouTube to the group? Yes, it's there. It's there. Over and over. Are you, say, the link wait, are you saying a Telegram group or this chat? 
No Telegram group so that someone can just ah, access it as anytime. Definitely, okay. we'll do that. We'll do that. Yes, it's on the YouTube. It's oh. on the YouTube already. No, he wants us to send the YouTube link to Telegram group. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. We yes. will do that later. Oh, oh okay. Uh. Thanks, my really appreciate. Hi, Videshi. <laughs> You're welcome. I think shout, there was a, we we skipped a question here. Oh, God. I think the person can ask the question in the group. He was asking about GRE. No, I said there's no need for that. Is it for um, masters or for PhD? For I masters. Think I think. Program. Okay, for masters. University program. of Bologna is 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 it's very um peculiar basically because the MBA I applied to 2020. They asked for GRE. They asked for hmm. GRE. Yes. Maybe the type of the scholarship. Is it a private scholarship? Um, that was global MBA. So they asked for that. Is but I don't know for general if yes, it's, it's, it is. But I don't know if this is still yeah, available. Yeah, sure. Okay. So um Kama, thank you. I'm giving your call WhatsApp soon. I'm ending the call now. Okay, no problem. Ciao everyone. 15. Bye. So I'm going to stop the streaming. Now. Who is that?